Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzon. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Fahey. Joining me as ever, prettiest boy under the sun, high-functioning pervert. You're going to like the way he looks. I Aaron Piet. Aaron Joseph Peter, how you doing, man? I- I'm feeling really good. It's a You're show- looking good. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome for that. I knew that. I know you were. It's a show about weirdos. That's huh? exactly right, Aaron. We are those weirdos. <laughs> We are those weirdos. We are those. We are those. We are those. We are those. And I'm not pretending to be retarded. I was trying to be a, a two year old child. Yes. We are those. I have. I know a couple weirdos. I only know two, and one is <laughs> in my head. Uh huh. Uh, children. God, God, God bless. What a mess. <laughs> what are my favorite things? <laughs> Beetlejuice. Kids. I know I love them. <laughs> <laughs> I know I love them. Uh, so, uh, speaking of loving kids and Beetlejuice, uh, that the guy from Beetlejuice is a noted pedophile. Which uh, uh, the father? <laughs> yeah, which he is, yes. and the principal from Ferris Bueller's Day he, Off. He, uh, yes. yes, yes, yes. Was it child porn or was it uh, the touchy touch? I don't know if there was any pederasty, uh, but there was certainly some child pornography. Now, before we get into any kind of pederasty, uh, to your right, my left, Mr. Matt Brousseau. Oh, thank God, you. I love him. Thank you. Amazing well, episode I, last he's week. He's a pedophile, but not a pederast. Uh, yeah, be. I don't know I, the no, difference. I don't. I am uh, not. The, I'd like to go on the record saying uh, neither. Hmm. Yeah, he's an elder file. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he likes some. Mm. He, he likes some little beat in. A uh, uh, ger- ger- warm ger- ger- gerontophile. Is that it to be? Okay, sure. Uh, no, you're none of that. Oh, thank you. You're a good man. Thank you. And, yeah. uh, wise, attractive. A lot of great uh, men through history are pedophiles, but you know, whatever. You could... Yeah, well, you I probably mean, thought you... they were great just for the pedophilia. <laughs> oh not yeah. For the, not for all the hey, Plato right, 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 right. level so, shit. Socrates. Hell of a pederast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other shit I don't care yeah. for. <laughs> Not a thinker. I liked him before he was a thinker. <laughs> yeah. I like to keep things simple, like fucking children. I, don't like, I like to get all abstract with my thoughts, whatever. Platonic ideals. Listen. Uh, that guy, that that Beetlejuice fucking pervert that you love so much. I don't that pedophile. Love him. You love him. Your you favorite. Sick fuck. You, you said he's your favorite. He's your actor. favorite guy. Yeah. No, you, know, you said you like to emulate him and be like him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> So what? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sue me. <laughs> it's a good movie. Uh, he also was, wasn't he not in the fucking... Um... Devil's Advocate? No. <laughs> he was. Was he? Yep. Was he also in Stay Tuned? He was in Stay Tuned. He was in a lot of things. Let's wasn't honest. he in like Mom Dude, and Dad Save the remember, remember we started talking about Stay Tuned and... How weird it was? Yeah, how weird it was. Because... Tim Burton worked on it. Yeah, he had some affiliation with yeah, it. Yeah, we went through like Tim Burton's whole fucking thing. Tim uh-huh. Burton's a local LA guy. He went to like. Did you see Stay Tuned, Matt? No. There's they get they do like a deal with the devil. They get a satellite dish. Yeah, it's a, it's a possessed satellite. Ah, dish. that old classic and, deal uh, with the devil. Yeah, John Ritter in it. John Ritter is the dad. Yeah, I'm and they John Ritter. they get um, noted non pedophile. Huh? Yeah, that's the one you stand in. And look for. where it got him. <laughs> Some daytime Emmy or something. Um, also, you mean he's dead? I mean that he's dead. Okay, yeah. that's exactly what he means. Um, it was. Uh, it was. It's a great little weird movie. It's. Uh, it just. There was something about the theatrics of it. It was. It was very. It was right around the time of Repossessed. Yeah, which was another kind of like culty comedy with, mm-hmm. and and dark, uh, mm-hmm. strange. Mm-hmm. But it was just like rich. Yeah. Because every channel was a different kind it of was like, like interdimensional cable box. It, yeah, it was like, oh, okay. it was an evil mockumentary of all these different genres. Like it was just what if it was Mash but evil and like you know like all that stuff. So like so the- it was a clip show movie. Yeah, but there kind- was an overarching narrative of this family that makes a deal with the devil to get and I think I, six I, channels. Uh, and, I, and I think okay. they get in into the TV. Oh, of course, a, a la shark shocker. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, but. Uh, yeah, it's it's you know, but um, it's 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 a good one. But yeah, that guy. It's funny how he uh, he's in all these creepy movies and he's a real life creep. He was also in Howard the Duck. 
No shit. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. He was like he was a, he, he was a standard in the cigarette lighter. He was a pretty standard evil guy for yeah. a lot of yeah. a lot of I the think, 80s. Uh, I think he was a standard evil guy for, <laughs> for a number of children. It turns out he was a, you know, a method actor. Yeah, yeah real evil. Um That's why it's called acting. Ed Wood, I believe, also. I think he was in that too. He was in Ed Wood? Yeah, I think he was in Ed Wood. I mean, that's Burton too, so yeah. duh. That's fucking interesting, man. Yeah. Um This guy's a fucking freak. He's a fucking weirdo. I uh, that was, we just that we just did out. his profile yeah. right now. That's yeah. all we know. Was in Beetlejuice like kids. The end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we could probably call him. You want to call him? Uh, I think he's he's a local. Yeah, uh, I think uh, he's was he's not in jail. No, no, no. You don't go to jail for that out here. No, no, no. no. Slap on the wrist. <laughs> you just, uh, if you're <laughs> now I'm just a VP <laughs> at Nickelodeon. <laughs> <And> a <fist laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a fist bump. A slap on the wrist and a fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> That's so depressing. Yeah. Very funny, though. Yes, and a, and a, a camera-free cell. <laughs> yeah. What are the odds? You can do whatever you want huh. here. <laughs> Kill yourself. Yeah. Get killed. Get killed. You can do, do whatever, whatever you want. want. <laughs> His inmate never touched him. <laughs> Fuck. We got to look that Jeffrey... <laughs> something or other. It's, he's another Lifestyles Jeffrey. of the rich and <laughs> kid touching. <laughs> Yo. Notice here in Notice the concrete here. toilet. It's for, for out of view of all the security cameras. Total lack of supervision. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never tell. Uh, <laughs> we got, that's really dark. Way to kick off the show. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about Instagram. You want to look at a pervert instead of hear about him? Love it. Get on to Profiles and Eccentricity mm. on Instagram. Get on to the fucking Patreon. Aaron's eventually one of these days going to do Endgame. I have to watch it ten more times. Yeah, exactly. You watch it all the time. Just do it. Well, did you know? Everybody's I, I, waiting. Okay. I Everybody's was... impatient. That's Everybody's right. upset. Well, you waited ten years and twenty-two fucking movies. Give it a minute. Okay. I've been doing a lot of research on my friend Joseph Campbell for this very reason. Okay. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a, a very very uh, thoughtful and stupid good analysis mm. of kind Endgame of and the things that. Um, lead up to it, so it's more than just Endgame. It's a lot of the. You can check that out on the Patreon. Also, we're doing additional it. profiles. We got Matt doing connections. Oh, mm-hmm. God damn, I love. We connections. got. Uh, I thought this was great. funny. We got chopped up jukebox. There's a lot of other shit on there. Mm-hmm. You get another show a week, five dollars a month. It helps us out. And we really let loose, and we get a little mm-hmm. crazy on yeah. there, and we really do. I mean, you know, you just get a little bit out there. The next one, I have a very fun voicemail that is actually not fun at all, oh. mm-hmm. but the circumstances that surround it. Are uh, fantastic. I like that a I lot. I'll just, I'll just tease that. Good. I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to tell me about something? Today? Uh, don't leave me a voice for the record. Never leave me a voicemail. I'm never checking it. Okay. Uh, really? You don't listen at all? No. No. I uh, text me. <laughs> yeah. If it's important, leave a text. Oh, like, okay. I'll, I'll read. I mean, that. I guess that's where we're doing now. Yeah. That makes sense. Write a letter. Go back. I'm old school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get a letter. You always read a letter when you get yeah. one. Oh, always. fuck. Mm-hmm. So don't leave me a voicemail. Okay. I, mean, I see that you called. Yeah. So, Fair. Uh, thanks. Also, uh, check out the Twitter. I posted some pedestrian pictures today. Oh, really? I saw yeah. that. Very, yeah. very nice. Wow. And if you if you if you tweet us about piss, I'll, I'll probably retweet it. Oh hell yeah! Love that. I love that. I love that. Uh, so this is a little bit more of a tame uh, eccentricity, but I think you know it's uh, this isn't uh, the most perverted thing. Uh, mm-hmm. well. But uh, Studs Terkel did this book called Working. Who, no, well, who is this? Name? Studs Terkel. Studs Terkel is the name of a, the author who. Did yes, okay. uh, a, a, a nationally known, famous author. Known. Studs Terkel. Yes, you've never. You yeah, never you heard, heard of Studs Terkel? No. Huh. It sounds like a cool name for your dick. <laughs> it has a lot of cool names for your dick, but yeah, that is a good one, I suppose. I go by many names. <laughs> Roger Johnson. <laughs> Robert Stat- Bala. <laughs> Robert Richard Bala. <laughs> Same speed. Tom Tom. <laughs> Dong Tom. Dong. <laughs> Studs tackle. Go ahead, please. I'm so, sorry. so he did this book called Working, where he just interviewed people about their jobs. Just any uh, any person. Just uh, he interviewed a taxi driver and a, one guy who plays the piano in a lounge. Um, he interviewed a grave digger, uh, a black cop in Chicago. And this is all in the seventies, and uh, and most of them used pseudonyms. He uh, a telephone operator, right? And uh, just what do you do? He'll just talk to him, and then he, he recorded all of the conversations, and then he transcribed them into a book called Working, and forever the conversations were lost. 
Uh, and then there's this uh, um, show, Podcast Diaries, that were, was they were given them, and so they went through them, and they released some. And so I listened to as many as I could. I think I listened to all of them. I'm not sure. But uh, I'm just going to pick one and one minute from another one just because I think they're the most interesting ones, and I think you guys will enjoy them. Oh. I love that. I love when you curate content for me. Purely for both of because you. Because I have no taste. <laughs> and when you, uh, when you show me what good is, then, I, uh, you know, then I'm better for it. Stud circle. No idea who this guy is. <laughs> now I know. So I, fuck, don't I, I don't I just I honestly just know the name. I have no idea what he does. I don't dead. know what he eats. He's <laughs> dead. I know one thing though. Matt's gonna tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Out of sight. <laughs> Touche. So so this is one of the ones I enjoyed. Uh, it was uh, this uh, uh, with this guy named Thomas Thomas Fischetti. Thomas Fischetti. He's from Brooklyn. You bet he is. He was a private eye. He had uh, he had he had taken jobs as a, a porter, a baker, a newspaper man, and a drunk <laughs> as a private investigator in Brooklyn. Those oh, he's, the... the best job is drunk. Uh -huh. Private eye, public D. <laughs> <laughs> so companies would hire him to find out what was going on. And uh, in the book, he goes by the pseudonym Anthony Ruggiero. Mm, I love that. Uh, but here's him. Here's Studs. So Studs would just go either he would just be like some, one of them. He's just riding in a car and he starts interviewing someone. He turns on his recorder. Uh, this one he goes to Fischetti's apartment. Fischetti's wife is sitting next to him. He pulls out the recorder. It's uh, four minutes. That's the whole the whole thing. Uh, and then this is this is it. I think you'll enjoy this. I'm seated somewhere in Brooklyn, home of uh, Anthony Ruggiero and his wife, a very delightful boy. So this is a book about work, jobs right. people do. How would you describe your work? Uh, let's see, how would I describe my work? My work. 90% of the job is the ability to move around to different places That's... without causing any suspicion. Mm. And, uh, Can I cut in it? Oh, sure. No, I'm just thinking, like, they usually put him in a job where he has the most mobility. Right, yeah. Man, you got to be a quick talker. Any private investigator, any private detective, he has one thing and one thing only, and that is his wits. He can't pull a badge out in a bind and say, hey, police department. No, he can't use a gun. You don't? No. No, you never, you never carry a gun. I'd like to. A lot of times I you would wish I had a gun. Yeah. Really? But, you know, you ain't got a gun, you ain't got a badge. You better be slick. Hunter, you got to be Excuse me, you got to be a bullshit. Mm -hmm. Undercover investigators yeah. are the greatest actors in the world. You got to be. Yeah. But coming back to the, uh, the nature of the work you do, well, what, for example? Okay, for instance... Uh, the butter business. What were you supposed to uncover there? A theft. They had a theft of butter. Oh my God. In the bread factory. Uh, it sounds bread ridiculous, fan. but it ran into quite a bit of money. 70 pound cartons of butter were being swiped on an average of once a week. And this was going on for six months to a year, <laughs> which amounted to something like $4,000, $5,000. Like so they sent me in there, and I got a job as a mixer. I was a dough mixer. So I had a week to bust this case. And I what happened was the I found a, uh, a homemade knife stashed away in one of the closets butter. with butter stains on it. Butter stains. We knew the butter was being taken out of the refrigerator. So what I did was I stationed myself on top of the refrigerator, which was a completely darkened room. And I stayed up there for four days. What? Eight hour shifts. <laughs> what were your feelings when you were seated on top of the refrigerator? Eight hours, you say? Eight hours, right. Did you have a need to go to the toilet? No. Huh. Whatever I had to do, before. I did before I went up there. And eating and so you, what did Butter you do during the eight hours? Smoke, looked out the window. <laughs> Keeping this place on a constant surveillance. I knew who came in, who went out. I knew the times. And so nobody saw you on top. Nobody day. saw me. And then this one particular Friday night, he comes. A cleanup man. So he comes, opens up, takes the butter, and then he left the area. I went down, I checked it out. It was butter. And I'm called Audrey. up my supervisor. <laughs> this was like two o'clock in the morning. I says, "Ah, we got the guy. The case is over." <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a novel. Right. Sounds like so, a novel. Sounds. Ah, we got the guy. The case is over. Your outlook outside the job on life. The lowest stakes. As a matter of ever. fact, I think this job has done more for me, as far as understanding people are concerned. Totally drama free. Yeah. You Sounds like a, a discovery novel. about mm. human beings too. You read a yeah, novel, basically dude? Basically, everybody's yeah. the same. <laughs> The he, hung out on, he smoked cigarettes in a factory. Why does a person steal? That's it. You know, if a guy that's steals a loaf of bread closed, because pal. he's got a kid who's hungry, you call this man a thief? I mean, you know, there's thieves and then there are thieves. 
Deefs. You think the job then Brooklyn. makes you more tolerant of people's frailties? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Makes you more tolerant? I think so, don't it, Kat? Yeah. You came a long <laughs> way. What do you mean? You came a long way. What do you way? mean? In other words, <laughs> I see, she's implying, if I get you right, that you didn't have this feeling once. Yeah, yeah you used to put people in categories, sort of. No uh, shades of things. Like, they were either black or white, you know, no, and, and that was it. And I think you've come out of that. Yeah, well, you find yeah. out that people aren't that bad, really. Regardless of what you read in the paper, basically, people aren't that bad. They're pretty good. I mean, you've seen even the guy stealing the butter we'll was doing this. it. This sounds he great. It. Yeah. You know, it's like the great Imaginary World Batman is brought guys. to you by Liberty Mutual. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. He had to, which is also a Buddha story. Thank you, Joseph Campbell, for that. <laughs> The first time... I don't you know, know if you've heard he John, but he's been reading uh, Campbell. I love Joseph Campbell. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've been hearing. <laughs> yeah. Not a pedophile, as far as I know. Uh, <laughs> oh, <he> taught, he, <laughs> still not done reading. <laughs> fingers crossed. He taught at a girls' school for 40 years. He did. He did teach at Sarah Lawrence for a very, very long time. Yeah. Um, I don't want to... No tangents here. But, <laughs> uh, it's very interesting. So this was in the 70s, right? Mm -hmm. 70s in Brooklyn, and you've got a guy who's embedding himself with some uh, scum of the earth what we one would consider scum of the earth type of people. I mean, right? a guy stealing from his own bread factory, pretty harmless. Probably a jan it sounded like a janitor yeah, stealing yeah. Clean up butter. Guys. Clean up guy. Yeah. yeah. That's fucking... what you call him. Not, not, yeah. not a janitor. Making a negative guy. $3 an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Takes a little butter. Stealing 70 yeah. pounds of butter a week. <laughs> Doesn't notice there's somebody smoking on the roof <laughs> of the fridge. <laughs> Somehow. Like, I mean, the biggest giveaway of all time... Cigarettes, yeah. yeah, like it reeks. No, but but you know what? Were, Everyone was smoking, and everybody everywhere. was doing it. it what, what's suspicious is if it doesn't smell like yeah. cigarettes. If there's, uh, if there's no up. cigarettes in this butter, huh? Something's up here. Yeah, no, no one's, one's smoking, smoking cigarettes. Yeah, no, I think I'm being watched. Huh. No ashes in the butter. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> what am I paying for? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good stuff. Just the idea, like you know, this fucking this guy's just playing, yeah, case closed, playing whatever. Yeah, All right, I got, I, I got a one week. I'm gonna stay up there for four. I was here for three days. Didn't figure it out. Uh, yeah, now I got four gun. days. Yeah, I can't, can't stop this janitor with a gun. Yeah, I had a guy that was weirdly like fucking, uh, very similar in like he was from New York, Uber driver, mm -hmm. and uh, luckily I had a pretty decently long ride with him because he was a uh, he was a PI. So I was like, okay, okay, <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell me. And he was like, yeah, you know, he's like, you got a lot of things there. We're like, you know, like, you go to Mexico, you get anything. He's like, you get a fucking death certificate, no problem. He's like, you get, you know, like, and I was like, yeah. He's like, so a lot of my shit was like insurance shit, people pretending they were dead, et cetera. I was like, <laughs> yeah? And he's like, yeah, you know, but it's like, they would always be like in the fucking, like in the hood or whatever. So I'd have to go there, stake it out. And I'm like, yeah? Like, what was that like? And he's like. He's like, well, you're a fucking weirdo in the hood, man. They know about it right away. You know what <laughs> I mean? And like, he's like, I remember one time I was staking out this place, and I just had like the window cracked a little bit. And he's like, this fucking kid just comes in with paper bag over gun to my head, like a child, like a ten year old child. And he's like, I can feel his hand shaking. And he was just like, What are you doing here? And I was like, I'm staking out this house. <laughs> and I like immediately gave up the whole shit. And he's like, He's like. He's like, uh, he's like, you're not doing anything. He's like, yeah, I'm looking at this thing, you know. He's like, all right, get out of here. And he's like, and I left, you know. Fuck. <laughs> but I mean, it's like, yeah, it's you know, the PI is romanticized because it is like, you want know, Humphrey Bogart or yeah, some shit, you know. But but Chinatown does a good job of it, showing that Jake it is. It's, Nobody respects you. You're a fucking snitch. Yeah, he gets his yeah. shit kicked in. No one respects him. He doesn't solve slice. the fucking yeah, he, like yeah. he solves the case, but doesn't solve. He can't do anything about it. Yeah, yeah. He has no power. It's not minding your business for yeah. money. Yeah. Yes, it is. It you're is being a no. It's, you're being it's a, a private nose. <laughs> yeah, you're you're, you're, you're a real you're a real pain in the ass. Yeah, you know, um, it is not cool. But is it cool? But yeah, you, I mean it, it is. is. Yeah, it is. But, but the reality day to day stuff is like ugh. All right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it, you said, you know, obviously a lot of it's very boring. A lot of it's just waiting. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, staking places out, shit like that, whatever. But, um, do you guys want to become private eyes? <laughs> yeah, we can do that if you want to. Yeah, just for a goof. I yeah, mean, yeah. You, I love refrigerators. We'll do it for a year and try it. Yeah. If it doesn't work <laughs> out. We'll just kill ourselves. Smoke some cigarettes. Who gives a shit? Yeah. So what? They're cops. <laughs> so what? They're private detectives. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> you do another one? Yeah, well, I mean, it reminds me, I think, like, uh, what is it? Uh, I think it's, uh, oh, no, it's a, 
It, it, it reminded me of like you know that kind of life. Or there's William Goldman has this story about he's writing. He's, I think it's The Sting. I can't remember. But he's when they had title scenes, you know, and a character would do something while all the credits were playing the beginning of the movie, and you could use that to establish the character. Mm. And I think it's The Sting, and he's establishing that Paul Newman's one of those those private eye type of guys. Maybe not that guy. And he's like, how do I establish that he's a fucking like just maniac and just like not in control of his life? And so the title scene, he talks about this. He's like, oh, in the title scene, I figured it out. He goes to make coffee, and he doesn't have any coffee, so he just takes the grounds from the thing from yesterday and puts that back in the coffee maker. Oof. God, that is low-life shit. I love it. <laughs> and immediately, right, you see that, and you I go... I know who he is. Yeah, I know exactly who this guy is. That's, yeah. That's, uh, that's turning your underwear inside out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's so gross. That's you know, so good. Decent idea. Well, well. You got nothing. <laughs> I mean, the rest is going out this pajama flap anyway. So. I mean, like, he, the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, like, you know, it's not like coffee isn't the most abundant commodity on the planet. Like, right. You know. He and could, coffee he could, filters. And he, I assume he's in New York, right? So, like, he could walk 100 feet in any direction <laughs> yeah. and yeah. get some coffee. Oh, yeah. No, no thanks. I'm fine here. Yeah, you know, exactly. That level of desperate. I love. I love that. Still good. Shit. I love. It's still good. I love people like um, uh, like uh, taking like uh, wounded soldiers. You know, like, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the party I'm, the night before, like little like swill of a beer grosses. bottle. Oh god, I love that. Ooh, it's so gross. It's disgusting, dude. It's sick, but I love that. It's, like, that is such a. Here's you know this. You know who this guy is now. Mm-hmm. I was living in a bar. He's the type of guy that rebrews. Old oh. coffee. I was living up at this bar in East Ham, Massachusetts, and that night we'd be standing on the porch above the bar. Bar would close at two. We would go up to the porch, and we would just drink and just hang out there until fucking whenever. And every now and then you would see these like little high school kids. You know, this is uh, fucking Massachusetts, so you had these big barrels of sand in the parking lot on their side in a little like uh, uh, you know a saw buck uh, a wood frame. And uh, I guess that- when it would get icing. I see. You would, uh, you know, take a shovel throw and sand, you'd throw some yeah. sand out there. Oh. And so every, you know, this place had a big bucket of sand. And so people out back, they would go smoke. They would fucking throw, toss their cigs into the sand bucket. Oh. Mm-hmm. Every night, you would see some high school kids creep up and take the smoke cigarette butts. butts. Duh. And she's like, Jesus fucking Christ, I guys. I did that before. Uh, I did that. This did? Korean kid in high school, Bruce. His dad <laughs> would always like smoke half cigarettes and just like leave him like in the ashtray in the bathroom. And I didn't like know what. So I would go to the bathroom and it's like half a cigarette. And I'd be like, oh, cool. I'm going to try it out. <laughs> no. I'd be like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why they call them butts. Yeah. Man, it's really gross. Yeah, it's really gross. That, and I think that's why I never became a smoker. Hmm. It's, I got some old Korean man's sloppy <laughs> seconds. <laughs> But it did. You did take to old Korean men very yeah, well. Yeah, you're still fucking and their butts. <laughs> so, <laughs> old Korean butts drive me nuts. <laughs> Let me tell you, they make old Korean butts make me wanna bust. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna play just like a, a very short, like a minute part of this one. This is where he's. Uh, is he uh, uh, Stud Circles interviewing uh, uh, Barbara Herrick? She's a female ad executive. In the 70s. Hey. So this is a fucking... She'll explain how fucking big this is. Oh, God. She's got some balls. But uh, you know, she's got a little bit of character that I think you guys will enjoy. Uh, this is about the work you do. You're a big shot, aren't you? Yes. Well, I write and produce television commercials. Big ones like General Mills, Campbell, Kraft. And I'm probably one of the, say, 10 highest paid people at the agency. Do you have a question what you're selling? Do I have a question what I'm selling? Oh, I would say all the time, of course. I don't think what I do is essential or necessary, even that it performs much of a service, you know. You're saying to a lady, because this oil comes from the bottom of the algae on the sea, you're going to have a timeless face. That's a crock of shit. (laughs) I mean, I know that. It's a part of my job. I do it. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that's really good. Women. Oh. oh, that's great. Yeah. And she goes on to say, like, talking out of my ass. For <laughs> I'm making this shit up. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know it. You must be retarded. <laughs> Studs Turkle, if that's your real name and not the name of some guy's <laughs> 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 
I'm some young guy on Blowin's car. <laughs> she goes on to say, she's like, I'm, a, you know, I'm not allowed to age. Um, that's where I am. I can't get older. Yeah. She says that. Yeah. Good thing she's got that bottom of the sea algae oil. <laughs> yeah. that she's yeah. she didn't age, right? Is she still around right now? What's her name? <laughs> Barbara Harris. Like apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. Just, <Eternal. laughs> just eternally around yeah. and fucking bullshitting people. <laughs> Crack of <blue>. shit. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to come back with some uh, some nonsense after we take a little break. I All right. love nonsense. BRB. Anyways. And we're back. <laughs> anyway, do you want me to keep that? You can do whatever you okay. want. <laughs> we'll see. No, <laughs> let's not. Okay. And we're back, folks. <laughs> Talking about pet files. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> it's, it's 340 in the So I am going to do like a little bit of an ambling thing here because what? it's, you know, I just like I got down this whole... I want to bring you to the rabbit hole experience you get into hole? when you're doing a profile. You never know where the stream may take you. You don't. Hmm. Um, and hmm. so I was really, I was really getting into um, John Holmes history. Oh, that's right. okay. I like this is a strong start. And uh, now John Holmes has had a big cock, Matt. Now Aaron, thirteen point five inches. Whoa! But like, how wide was? Not exactly a lightweight. It's pretty girthy. Wow. Spongy. Uh, so it, yeah. All those, all those big dick guys like Ron Jeremy. Yeah, it's spongy. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's you know, there's only, only so much blood well, in the human the, body. The, the diet back then was dog shit. Yeah. Nobody knew anything about kegels. Uh-huh. Right. Everybody was just a, it was just a different. No blue chew. Th- yeah. No. And you know what? They wouldn't last one minute playing this game. <laughs> the new, <laughs> the new hard dick game that yeah, we're all playing. That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, he. Um, I mean, they might last five. John Holmes was. Uh, it, this is what's insane too is that you know he's a real skinny guy. He's six foot one, one forty five pounds. Yeah, yeah, probably had no coke. And just, and the uh, the the cock is is uh, a good eight pound probably. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, so he's you're saying he he tips his center lot. of gravity. Yeah, is total solid. mess. Yeah, the thing kind of started dive bombing. It's a weeble downwards. wobble of cock. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that's. I mean, that's how Galileo discovered the. Uh, uh, planetary, uh, uh, the, the gravitation, the, the gravitation of, of bodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Saw his, his pendulum own dick had an orbit. <laughs> John Holmes. Uh, you know, you could drop a, a feather and a John Holmes load, <laughs> and they hit the ground at the same time. It's, it's physics. <laughs> he was um, supposed to have a load uh, in almost equal volume to Peter North, uh, allegedly. No, that's that's allegedly. Uh, well, well, you know, it, the proofs on the fo- the film footage here. Uh, yeah. they, they said he was a definite second. Uh, pretty big load. Oh, because it has to travel so far. Uh, no, well, no, P is stored in the cock. The cum is stored in the cock. So uh, the bigger the cock, more cum. But there the ejaculate is. volume is, has never Science. has never been confirmed. Oh wait, really? <laughs> what a great <laughs> sentence. Did you say confirmed? <laughs> confirmed. We have confirmation. Unfortunately, the ejaculate volume was never confirmed. So oh, it, it's mainly it's a counterfeit. It's Hearsay. Uh, you know, uh, I don't really like just you know non-scientific stories. Yeah, so. I, I don't uh, want to, This is anecdotal cum so, pseudo cum science. I'll, I'll not, stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. If, um, I, if you can come hard with data, like Excel spreadsheets. Yeah. Like, if you can come harder, come longer, come more. If, mm-hmm. I'd love a max load uh, Excel spreadsheet here. Uh, John uh, John Holmes, John C. Holmes, was uh, also known as John Duvall, John Estes, <laughs> Big John Fallis, Big John Holmes, mm-hmm. John C. Holmes, John Curtis Holmes. Oh, that's what this is. Johnny says. Holmes. Mm-hmm. Big John with two Gs. Mm-hmm. Oh, how do they think but of that? Big G. John with one G. Uh, G? John, one G. Where's the G? Big. Oh, Wait, what, you thought John with the G? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just okay. fucking coked up idiot. <laughs> John Ray, Johnny Wad, Johnny Sacra, uh, Long John Wad, Johnny B. Wad, <laughs> John, Johnny, Johnny the Wad. Johnny B. Wad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chuck! <laughs> you know that seminal volume you've been looking for in your loads? <laughs> well, taste this! <laughs> this phone's got everything. <laughs> <laughs> the Excuse me, you 13... wouldn't believe the shit coming out of this white boy, man. 
All right, this is the 13.5 cock. Uh, <laughs> try to keep up and watch. It's going to be a little bit spongy, but <laughs> try to uh, keep you know, up if we squeeze the, the base, <laughs> <laughs> squeeze the base, keep up with the changes. <laughs> He spit up. Oh, that was we a good spit, spit up. up. That's very nice. That's a Peter North esque <laughs> volume of spit up. Well, that's a first. That's great. Great that's job, John. Very, very nice. Um, <laughs> so stupid. I love it. Johnny the Wad. Johnny the Wad. John C. Wad. John Quad. John Footlong. The Sultan of Smut. <laughs> King Wad. The Colossus of Clit. The Duke of Wad. The Duke of Wad. The Wizard of Wad. Yeah, the Wizard see, there of we Wad. go. That's all right. Now we're getting here. That's, right. that's nice, right? The Wizard of Wad is great. So, John Holmes, uh, he grew up in like a little town outside Columbus. Uh, his mother was like Southern Baptist. His dad, um, he would, uh, he was like an alcoholic <laughs> maniac. He would sometimes throw up on the children. I don't know. What? what? Yeah, he would barf. He would Ralph on the kids. <laughs> <laughs> John, Johnny Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Barf. Daddy Ralph. Um, and his dad, uh, second. Second in volume only to... to yeah. yeah, so she was, like, her. in and out of marriages. It was years later. Uh, he was getting a, a passport in 1986 to go to Italy to shoot with our former profile, uh, Cicciolina. Cicciolina. And, and that's when he found out on the birth certificate his, his real dad was a guy named Carl Estes, who was a railroad worker that, uh, you know... Yeah, they go town to town. His mom, yeah. They go, yeah, they go town <laughs> to town, slowly. <laughs> um... That was the first time he knew that his dad wasn't his dad, basically. Mm. Um, so the guy puking on him was not his own. <laughs> no, that was, that was his stepdad. Um, oh, that must have felt so nice to hear. Yeah. Um, Getting puked on by this railroad, man. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, dad, will you puke on me? <laughs> Are you my father? He, uh, he, like, you know, would kind of go to a um, uh, his grandparents and, like, you know, get some cool life there when he was a kid. And then his mother was remarrying again. And uh, they were moving around Ohio, and uh, around 15, he just, like, gets in the Army. He enlists in the Army um, with his mom's written permission. 15 years old, man. So what year is this? That is going to be... 1962? Uh, no, 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 because he was, let's see, 44 plus 15 is 59. 59. Oh, he's a lot older than I thought he was. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> he looked like shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, okay, uh, there you go. And he was, you know, honorably discharged, and um, <laughs> most that of was his <laughs> other name. Yeah, honorable discharge. <laughs> he, honorable uh, wad. He got out in '63. Goes to L goes to L.A. Uh, he's doing door to door sales. What's he selling? Um, well, I mean, Bluetooth. pizza. He's uh, it's, it's a variety of stuff. And then uh, he was working at the coffee nips factory, uh, tending to the vats. Okay, now is this some racial stuff that I'm not aware of? <laughs> no, no. And uh, he worked as an ambulance driver. And during that time, he met a nurse named Sharon uh, Gibbonini in 64, and they married in 65 right after he turned 21. Huh. And um, he got work at a uh, meatpacking warehouse huh. in uh -huh. Cudahy. You don't say. Oh, Cudahy. <clears throat> and uh, Cudahy he, That's here in California. Meatpack. Yeah. He was uh, a, a forklift driver. That's down in the uh, Southgate area. That's right. Still a real shithole. That's exactly right, Aaron. It's called Southgate. But going in and out of the freezer uh, kind of like fucked him up with his like, you know, uh, it's you're going in and out of the desert hot to the freezer mm -hmm. and it fucked him up really bad. It probably made his dick really big. Like and spongy. Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Like, oh, big, small, big, small. And, you know, Sharon is like, you know, she's got a bunch of miscarriages at home, like his wife and stuff. And in 1971, um, he basically starts, uh, he goes to uh, to get work in the adult film industry just as, like, anything. A mope? Yeah, a gaffer. I mean, a, a guy working. A freezer monger. Behind the, anything. Behind the scenes, you know, uh, a fucking, you know, cameraman, anything. Yeah. And then, like, the very, they were just like, yeah, we don't need you. And he was talking to Bob Chin. Oh, good old Bob Chin. Bob Chin, he's Chinese. And he would uh, kind of, you know, make John Holmes' name with the Johnny Wad series, where he was, like, you know, a, a pri private detective mm -hmm. style private guy. Dick. Yeah. And um, they were, you know, they were so, they were so successful. First of all, John Holmes goes there and he's, you know, he, he is asking for all these other jobs. They're like, no, 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 no. And then he's like, well, I also have this. 
He throws it on the and table. And he trots it out. And uh, Bob Chin is like not even in the room anymore by this he stage. He hears yeah, it. He saw it from around a corner. And yeah. the other guy. The shadow is, alone. The other dude is like. Is there yeah. an eclipse? Yo, you need to you need to come in here, dude. Um, Because this dude is packing major this heat. This dick's no motherfucker. This meat packer is packing meat. And uh, they they were like, you know, you got to. um. You gotta get involved with this whole porno thing, you know? Yeah. And he was like, uh, basically, he told, they told him, like, you get $50 a day, and he's like, I get 75 And they were like, okay. So, so did he? Well, yeah, if you pay him by the inch, man, you gotta fucking time and scale, a half. scale it up. Yeah. I mean, so he just figured, I got this huge cock. Pornos, that's the thing. Yeah. It wasn't like, well, I find it interesting. I would like to maybe get in. No, it's just like that's what you do when you have a fat dick. Yeah, but I mean, like he is like such a like a kind of normal, you know. I mean, you know, back in you know sixty five, you can't go showing your dick to everybody. You know what I mean? No, no, it's not like now. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but he um, he tells his wife like. Yeah, man, I figured this thing out. I got this big dick, and why didn't you tell me about it, you I, bitch? I'm gonna start doing porn, and she's like. Well, I'm not gonna like, and like, you know, she's still in love with him and stuff. So she's kind of like ends up becoming like a mother figure because uh, okay. she's like not really gonna leave him, but she's like, I'm not, we're not husband and wife anymore if you're fucking girls all day. So was he, he was a likable sort? He was very charming yeah. when he wanted to be. Um, and he really didn't want people to really get too close. Like most of the people on, you know, set with him, like, Bob Chin was like, I never had him over my house, like, he kind of made my career and I made his, but, like, we never really got tight, you know? Huh. But the people that he got close to um, found him, like, very warm and, and loving, and, you know, obviously Boogie Nights is based on John Holmes and the uh, relationship with, uh, with Bert, Bert, Mr. Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds is based on a, the real porn producer, who was the first porn producer to win one of those First Amendment battles, mm -hmm to have the right to get that shit shown. Mm -hmm. And um, he became a close friend. His children were, uh, you know, um, John Holmes was their godfather. No shit. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And and they really genuinely loved him. Mm. And, you know, as I'm going to tell you, you're going to find out John Holmes is not a lovable dude whatsoever. No. I mean, he's a real fucking piece of shit. Yeah. Um, but I guess he just had some charisma when he wanted to turn it on. Well, and, you know, uh, like our good private eye friend in Brooklyn is that, you know, not every it's not black and white. Right. It's not. Yeah. I mean, um, the cum is white. Ideally. Otherwise, there's a certain issue. But, yeah. but you know, he maybe he starts out on some sort of... Uh, Okay, path where people seem to like him, and then Make there's a certain few bad level of, choices here and there. Certain level of power, I guess. Today we had called it big dick energy. Ah, oh, uh, yeah, but this now is the thing, you know, that's and the key to the Green New Deal is big dick energy. The funny yeah. thing is, is that Indeed, like yeah. you know, you can listen to uh, there's a there's a at the height of his career, there's a doctor named Exhausted that comes out. It's great, huge inspiration for Boogie Nights, and mm -hmm. scenes ripped straight out of it, recreated dialogue, everything the same. And Paul Thomas Anderson was saying, we did that in Boogie Nights because we didn't want to be accused of going over the top. I replicated everything exactly to be like, no, this is real. This is how dumb this really was. Mm -hmm. All the bad edits, all the cuts of like, why are you only showing me the bartender getting a drink now? Like, yeah. there's stupid editing and dumb Running shit. Running on rooftops. Yeah, bad action sequences and stuff. The most over the top shit was really the stuff he ripped right out of reality for that movie. It's Absolutely, really yeah. Um, but Paul Thomas Anderson, very, very young man when he writes it, early 20s, yeah. Yeah. he has a great appreciation of kind of like the tragedy of Holmes and like it being like, you know, imagine if your dick is the only thing of value. It's like not really anybody likes you. Right. You just have this one thing. I mean, you do what you start taking for granted maybe. Maybe it starts like, well, fuck these people. They don't want anything to do with me, so I'm not going to get better. Not right, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. Like huge tits or whatever else. Like it's like, right. do you even know me? Or are you right. just right. like really I mean, psyched about these tits? No matter what, no matter, it's going to be the thing that people, it's a lightning rod. Right, <laughs> like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether you, he could be an amazing person, still the dick is going to be, you know, the... Focal point. I mean, right. lightning, lightning Rod was probably probably one of his nicknames. That's right. The um, the porn industry at this time has now um, you know, it's still the early seventies. Um, so the first Johnny Wad movie comes out in seventy one, and instantly first the, Wad. Yeah, yeah. First Wad, very good, fucking asshole. <laughs> um, 
John Wad first Wad. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's like the the distributors are immediately like, we got to have more of this Johnny Wad thing, you know. Um, uh, Ron Jeremy says it very well. He's like, you know, for all the muscular guys and whatever, because he's a big fat idiot. Yeah, that he's like, you know, the thing they want really is they want to see a big fucking cock and some tiny blonde or whatever, you know? He's not wrong. Right. So, but like the appetite, they weren't really, they didn't have any idea how much people would be like. So the Johnny Wad series goes like immediately into like seven films and they're announcing the next film at the end of the film you're watching. First Wad part two. That's the, that's how, <laughs> that's how successful it is, you know, and. Well, uh, you know what, it, it's their version of saying you don't last five minutes watching this movie. Right. Because well, they got, they know you're going to bust so fast watching Johnny Wad <clears throat> plow through some fucking runaways that you're not going to get to the end to know that there's a sequel. They're going to tell you right now, Hey, I know you're just getting chubbed up. There, <laughs> there's more. So. Right. By the time you get a heart on the next movie, you'll be out. Ex- that's exactly <laughs> yeah. right. And, um, you know, so you get uh, Johnny Wad, the first one, Flesh of the Lotus, Bob Chin, Chinese guy. Yeah, it sounds uh, good. Blonde in Black Lace, um, huh. a.k.a. Johnny Wad and his 13 caliber weapon. His Ooh. 13 caliber weapon? Uh-huh. Um, Tropic of Passion, mm-hmm. Liquid Lips. Liquid lips. Liquid lips. Tell them Johnny Sounds Watt nice. is here. Uh, both of those in, in seventy six. So like I said, like they're they're coming out fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Jade Pussy Cat. Oh, right. oh, that sounds friendly. The China Cat. The oh. China Cat. Bob Chin again. Of course. Uh, Only he was allowed no, to do those. No, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> Who did this? <laughs> he yes. Um, it's uh, it's but they're they're really successful and Bob Chin. As you know, as a fan, I like Bob Chin did great porn movies. Yeah, they're very very fun. Uh, he did Candy Stripers, which is great. Candy Stripers is very good. You turned me on to that. One. Yeah, it's a lot of hurt people getting blowjobs and sex because oh. they're in the hospital. They, oh, you know, the Candy tough. Stripers come around. They have all this dirty sex with you. It's great. They're really fun. They're so emblematic of the type of porn we always talk about on the program. That is, it's just good and fun and good clean smut. You know, yeah, everybody's having a good time. Got some upbeat music. Everybody's yeah. natural and great, and yeah. uh, and everybody's getting off. Yeah. You know? Um, but, like, so, in the early 70s, like, the turnaround is basically Deep Throat, right? Not a not a John Holmes movie. No. But that's 1972. And you have... Most profitable movie of all time. That's insanity, man. That's fucking insane. Makes total... I mean, of course. Yeah, yeah makes sense. Yeah, of course. It was shown shown in regular theaters and yeah. fucking Johnny Carson was out there. Eh, Perfect. And it caused and they fucking pay her. Yeah, Johnny Carson going to see it and yeah, I mean it was the kind of thing people would talk about going to do. Like, did you go see Deep Throat? You know, yeah. like, uh, and when you see the movie, you're like, why this one? And it was, but yeah, na- us now, I, but back yeah, then, the timing. The, but there was shit just as everything. hardcore out there. It was something. Just people were well, like clip, ready for it. Her clip was in the back of her throat the whole time. Yeah. Here, here, what you're looking for, if you, I'll get Joseph Campbell on Deep Throat if you want. What you were looking for was inside you the whole time. <laughs> right here. But here's the thing 1971, oh, bro, Johnny Watt is doing, you know, his little action thing, which is more like a regular movie. And then Deep Throat comes out, which is like the fucking Honey I Shrunk the Kids of porn. <laughs> Some fantastic. A scientific, like, and that's the one that, like, it's just, I don't know. Well, she was the focus of the movie, right? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. But, Uh, I mean, and not, I guess. I mean, guys were rarely the focus of the movie, you know. Right. John Holmes was an exception. Sure, certainly. Uh, He was a true male porn star. Yeah, I mean, you know, the documentary about him called Wad, um, Hmm. everybody, there's a lot of people, like, open it up by just saying, like, he's absolutely the Elvis of porn. It's just like it will never be that big again, <laughs> and it's it's yeah they'll be better but not as big. He was a, it was a smaller the fall. fame yeah, it was, it was the time. fame was yeah. just so crazy. Yeah, you know you could stop people on the street and they would know who John Holmes is. Like yeah. there's not a single person you can ask who a mo- contemporary adult male star is. Right. I mean, odds are more people today know John Holmes. It's no, like Babe, Babe Ruth. Right. But right. you know, more people today, it, because of the size of the country, know who may know who one particular porn star is. Right. But, but as a percentage, yeah, everybody knew Babe Ruth. It everybody was, knew John Holmes. It was just the perfect timing for that to happen. Yeah. 
But before it got turned around and some of these, you know, legal battles were won about the right to make porn and stuff like that, there was a culture of, you know, deep secrecy. And, you know, we get picked up at Matt's house and then we would get driven to Aaron's house mm-hmm. and we'd pick up more people at my house and then we would go to go a shoot at the park. We, yeah, it would be like, it was, it was like avoiding tales because... You know, the vice squad was going to get you. Like, this mm-hmm. was mad illegal. It was very, like, on the level of drugs, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, like, in, in Scotty's thing. Like, fucking, the vice squad would just go into a gay bar and be like, I have to arrest five of you. Yep. You know, who's going to be? Um, it's, it's all pretty I, I, abstract. Chris, yeah, Chris, I, Christy Canyon talked about that, too. Like, it's just like, yeah, we met at the guy's house, and then we kind of did it in the park right before sundown, and then, yeah. that, you know, that's it. You know, no permits, nothing like that. It was yeah, just no, did it. deep underground, super underground, and that's why, you know, the earlier stuff too was found to be like people considered it more countercultural. So, you know, like they'll slip in more homosexual stuff in early gay mo- in in early porn movies. Like there's be like one gay hookup in the movie because they were like, well, yeah, the whole thing is rebellion. Oh, yeah. We're doing whatever we want here. Mm-hmm. Right. If I'm going to jail, I'm going to do it all. You know yeah. what I mean? Um. Dog, you know, whatever. Uh, no, there's no dog fucking. Um, uh, well, the Linda Lovelace did was forced to part of. It. Yeah. Um, but the, you know, this time you're you're uh, you're gonna be arrested on prostitution. Forced. <laughs> stop. Stop. Sorry. Stop. Sorry. <laughs> so, John, around this time is uh, is arrested for pimping and pandering, um, and he gets out of it by being a snitch. He wow. starts snitching for the LAPD, Fuck. and he's. His handler is this uh, LAPD detective uh, that loves him. Huh. This guy he named uh, Thomas Blake. He's like, it was a pleasure working for him. He says a big... it was a pleasure working for him. And it sounds like there might have been It sounds some, like he uh... was getting butt-fucked by Johnny Wad. Or right. right. at the very least being introduced to people oh, that he could see... fuck. Can, I... So, can I see it? Uh, see, I mean... I'm undercover. Now you gotta imagine. Now you gotta yeah. imagine. This guy... Is gonna snitch on any porn movie being made that he's not in. Um, to stay out of it, he's 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 dishing on the competition, you right? Fucking hire this guy. So this fucking this is, asshole. You know what it's like it's like fucking Whitey Bulger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have the, I let the cops out take out your competition? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he um, you know there was no drugs for him in the early days, and then That's why it, his cock was so good. it gets into it gets into coke throughout the seventies. At the end of the seventies, he's making three thousand dollars a day. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. $2,000 a day. Yeah, he's, he's a massive, massive star. Um, is he working every day? <laughs> like, I mean... I, so much wad to... Yeah, I mean, so right around, you know, the turn of the 80s, um, the freebasing and the coke use gets so bad that he's he's getting, like, flaccid on screen. Right. And you can kind of tell he's not really up to, to par and insatiable. Right. Porn classic. And now that's with Marilyn Chambers. That's exactly right, Aaron. And Marilyn Chambers takes his big floppy wiener <clears throat> in her butt. Does she? I think so. Yes. And she ended up with the guy that abused oh, Linda Lovelace right. from Deep Throat. Jesus. He married Marilyn Chambers after they split. That's crazy. It's totally a, It's insane. a very, I mean, twisted uh, it's whole- It's a like, complicated web yeah. of yeah. spunk, you know? It is. Um, he, he starts getting into crime and uh, selling drugs for gangs. But Pro- he's making three thousand dollars a day. So is he? I mean, his coke habit is probably five. He's is doing that- he's doing a lot of fucking drugs, man. And you know, <laughs> how much coke isn't fun? Well, because he's waking. He's 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 waking. He's probably waking up at like three in the afternoon, and he's still tired. Right. And so he's, he's like, gotta I gotta, do, gotta some do some coke. Right. It's not fun at that point. Yeah. It's just maintaining. Yeah. Right? You know, it it's a lot of shit goes like he gets involved with this fifteen year old girl. Right. I know 76. that from the movie. And he's kind of like grooming her or whatever. And this kind of all dovetails with his like descent into addiction. And, you know, his wife is like, lets her move in Mm -hmm. and knows it's kind of a thing. And like her and the wife are close. And, you know, kind of she's a mother. She's a den mother to everybody. Yeah, exactly. She knows the power of that dick. Mm. Yeah, it's um. So she was kind of like you know always, and then you know he would abuse her and stuff, and you know like hit her and stuff. But like the first time they hook up, she was like, oh yeah, he was super gentle. When you're 15 years old, the first person you fuck is John Holmes. Jesus Christ Almighty. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what, willing. A, what a disaster. Yeah, but. that's a nightmare for everybody involved. Yeah, yeah. but she yeah. said it was really sweet and great, which is like... Well, yeah, so, when it's soft, it probably doesn't even Yeah, hurt. yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's it's a nightmare. Um, <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take a soft John Holmes any day of the week. Do it right now. 50 bucks, 50 bucks. Yeah, man. It's, you know, it's like, it's it's really weird because, the 13 like. 13 inches are 13 inches. You know, then you have people like Juliet Anderson, a.k.a. and, and Peg, uh, who <coughs> said, like, this guy was a fucking asshole. Other. Sika. Sta- Sika loved him. Other stars loved him. Um, but, yeah, he could just be super divisive. And he was just either on with you and, like, willing right, to connect right. or not. Mm. But for the most part, he was very private. I mean, it sounds like drugs. I mean, Yeah, but even before that, it was just kind of like. His wife said he had in, in, insanely bad self-esteem issues. Um, oh, fuck, people only like me for my car. And uh, yeah, well, I mean, well, I mean, grow, grows up in abusive grows households. Grows up, yeah. There's shit. covered in puke. Yeah. Multiple yeah. smells like puke. Multiple dads on the scene, yeah. and yeah, you know, just, no, no good way to. Yeah, there's nothing good come going he, in, coming out. But then, like you know. He would do like charity work. Like he would do save the whales stuff. He would do Greenpeace stuff. He would go like door to door for fucking uh save the seals. Imagine what? John Holmes shows up on your doorstep. Oh, that's the last thing. Talking about well. seals. <laughs> Where do I know you from? Yeah. Oh, the seal in your pants. Hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Looks like you've got a an otter down there, pal. <laughs> What's going on? I got a screaming otter in my pants. He was um he would do, you know, a lot of like Fishing, hiking, camping stuff, you know, like... like for, on his own? Oh, well, like with, you know, friends and family and stuff. Well, that's like, normal, hey. Yeah, you know, but yeah, like, yeah. it was it's just so weird, because then, like, the rest is, like, this descent into total, you know, just addiction and abuse and, um... I mean, porn's not a nine-to-five job. Porn... Right, but also, like, you're doing so much drugs that now your real estate is declining, right? Because right. you got a big floppy penis. Yeah. And it's big, but it is floppy. And, you know... It's 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 now not your time to shine so much anymore. And like Bob Chin had to like sever ties with him because he had like a shitload of of uh, coke on set one time. And Bob Chin's like, he's like, I took it, I threw it down the toilet. He became really obstinate, right. and then I never worked with him again. Right, it's my big dick. I say when exactly. Mm-hmm. It was that very much that kind of thing. And uh, he, uh, you know, so then you know, work is going to be a little bit harder to come by, or maybe the price isn't as good, or right. whatever, you know. And uh, you're just doing so much drugs, and then you get into debt with people. And he was a big time liar. Um, he didn't really know. It's shown so well in in Boogie Nights, mm-hmm. the thing that's in Exhausted, where he's doing an on camera interview in a documentary about himself, which is you know made by like Jesse St. James, or like it's it's made by another porn star mm-hmm. as a tribute to John Holmes, mm-hmm. and it's. I, 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 and, and the director's next to him in frame. Yeah, and and you know it's a bunch of sex scenes. I thought it was a legit documentary, so I like got all my friends together to watch it. And my <laughs> like not. you and your boys, my, my friends, there's girls there too, watching like, porn documentaries <laughs> alone again. They're like, why are we just watching porn? And I was like, I didn't know it was like this. I thought it was like a sure, real documentary. Actually, yeah, they didn't believe you. Anyway, you guys feeling itchy? You want to <laughs> take your clothes off? It's hot in here. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But uh, yeah, people are just kind of like, what's John doing? And I was like, ha, ha, I didn't know, man. Uh, um, but the in-between sex scene stuff is actually like fake documentary, which is meant to make him look good. And they still leave in stuff that makes him look bad. And one of the, which is this scene with him and Bob Chin where he's sitting next to Bob Chin, the director that made him famous. And he's going, I mean, he's uh, he lets me block my own scenes. You know, he lets me block my own sex scenes. And um, the interviewer was like, how many other directors make you do that? He's like, oh, only like two or three. And she goes, why do you uh, you let him block his own sex scenes? And he's like, no, I don't let you block your own sex scenes. <laughs> and he goes, well, you see, that's it. I don't tell him how to direct. He doesn't tell me how to fuck. You know? yeah. he, just gets, he gets caught he's in the lot. They, yeah, yeah. they keep it in. It's... They leave it in. It's so funny. And uh, he talks about having sex with 14,000 women. Um, that was a claim. <sighs> Uh, I mean, Will Chamberlain had ten thousand, and that guy. I think twenty-five actually. Was it tw- Jesus Christ? I mean, they, they weren't good with. No, no, that's an athlete. They weren't good with numbers back then. Did no, he... yeah, they cooked the books. Yeah, yeah. and I don't know if like it can, ABA, NBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Julius Serving had a lot numbers. Of... Yeah, uh, yeah. He, or, no, uh... wait, Will Chamberlain, not Julius Serving. So the wait, what? okay, Great. the friend producer was uh, <laughs> Bill Bill Emerson. That was that's who. What's his name is based on. Uh, Burt, Mr. Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds, yeah. And he was the, the one who had the kids that were, John Holmes was their godfather or whatever. 
And uh, seems to be a rushed choice, but yeah, he, anyway. uh, yeah, he was the guy that you know had the first like obscenity charges, turned around, got a great First Amendment lawyer, and you know started like fighting back against that shit. And he was like one of the few people close with John Holmes, and he was like, he was so full of his own shit that like he really believed it. Like I would tell people that John Holmes flew to London once a month to have sex with a woman, or 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 just to let him like. Get, let his cock be sucked by a woman for like fifty thousand hmm. dollars, and he's like. And later we were like on wait, a boat. Who's, who, who's paying who? This fictional woman, this lie that Bill Emerson made up, uh -huh. the was queen. paying John Holmes fifty thousand dollars to fly over to London right. to to let her to yeah. suck his to, cock to, to put a giant fucking uh, uh, hoagie, yeah. yeah, an uneatable hoagie, a, uh, a, a soft baguette, a wet yeah. baguette. And John later brought it up to Bill, like, hey, remember when I used to go to London to? And he was like. No, that, that was bullshit. We made that up. And he's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Jesus. Like, well, because he did so much coke, he fucking blew his mind. Yeah, out. but I think it was just also like. Well, sometimes you're like, when it, if you recount a memory to somebody, all you're really doing is recounting mm -hmm. your memory of the memory. So, at a, And so, also, like, you know, is it the better, the more you believe it, the better a liar you are. Yeah. So it's like you can mm -hmm. kind of train yourself to believe that shit. Or you, you know? want to because. Yeah, you fucking, want to. You're, yeah. You're, you're, it's fucking. Six in the morning, and you got nothing to do but coke, and you're just like, things are good, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I Remember went that to time when my dick actually worked. Uh -huh. <laughs> he uh, he would say things just like on the spot that were so great to add to his own mythology. He would he would be like, uh, oh, I was getting uh, erections, and I was snapping the elastic on my underwear four or five times a day, so I had to just stop wearing it. That's the dumbest thing <laughs> that's, I've ever heard. Who's no, no. he just saying that to I, people oh, who I don't didn't... wear underwear. I can't. No, I can't. Yeah. It's no, just, that's it's just not fair. Came, I was losing a lot of money. It's not yeah. fair to the underwear. No, you Le know? Levi's made out a, spare, a special pair of jeans for me. Um, it's a, a patch with a he's, He said he got a degree in physical therapy and medicine political science from UCLA. I mean, that sounds like Lies. a fun joke. <laughs> Bill Emerson said the closest he ever got to UCLA was breaking into cars in the park. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> And um, so I've I've donated more sperm to UCLA than he has. Well, yeah, officially. Officially, yeah. Uh, the people thought he was uh, Eddie Haskell from Leave It to Beaver. They thought he was Eddie Haskell from No. It, Eddie Haskell they started his, that they rumor. Think his yeah, Dick was Eddie yeah, Haskell. Yeah. It was it was the Wonder Years Marilyn Manson thing. They like had like a slight resemblance. That is so. Stupid. That's Eddie Very. Haskell saying, "I got a fucking fat ass." <laughs> yeah, cock. that's all. Have that you is. seen the new shit I'm doing? Hey, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. It's yeah. I'll never tell. <laughs> he um, he did do one gay porn, "The Private Pleasures of John C. Holmes." That's right. Uh, and in that, uh, you know, he's pitching, not catching, of course. Um, that's the stardom, yeah. And uh, it's I think he does like two scenes, and the rest is just you know um a uh, a uh, you know. Full blown um, Sultan style gay porn movie. Um, John Holmes is the Sultan, of course. Mm. Of course, of course. Um, one of the rumors that came out of that was that. He, he, <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> that he. Uh, <laughs> Making himself spit up now. <laughs> he puked on himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sad. <laughs> the rumor that came out of it is that. He, you know, he's like, yeah, well, I did a gay movie at one time, but I'll tell you what happened was I killed two of the guys with my cock and got no. tried for manslaughter. That's the <laughs> dumbest. That is the best he could do. <laughs> That's like the Bruce Lee, my hands are registered. Lee totally. Lee. It's yeah. totally that. Sorry, man. You ever? I was the original Mr. Hands, pal. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't actually a horse. It was me dressed up in the back of a horse costume. <laughs> that's, that's very progressive of him to say that men's assholes can't take a dick like women. That's right. <laughs> these, these men's assholes are pussies. <laughs> oh, they're soft these days. Yeah, it's Should like, I mean, he would, he would just love. I'd fuck more guys, but uh, <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> I got a lot of blood on my hands. <laughs> my own personal Vietnam. Because uh, I wash my dick with my hands. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, he was... Um, he was just, you know, like a, a, a creep, a total liar, and you know, you really didn't know what was going on. He could be rude, and um, he was definitely described as sociopathic sometimes. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, um, like this girl is like, you know, groomed by him, and like she goes through the abuse and his descent into addiction. She's doing coke too, of course, but you know, she like runs away from him, and you know, um, then he would kind of like lure her back and like all coke. that shit, you know. Well. I, you know, she was in love with him or whatever. You know, it was like, 
He was really charming yeah. when he wanted to be, you know? Yeah. Um, well, that's why you groom people, so they come back. Exactly. Take he... notes. <laughs> Here on Profiles and Eccentricity, how to exploit minors. Yes. Yeah. He, um, so he gets, he gets indebted to, um, some people around uh, the early 80s called the Wonderland Gang. Is that right? And they had a house on Wonderland Avenue. That's right. Where uh, they had all-night parties. And mm. there would be a lot of screaming and carry-on and stuff like that. And, you know, hectic partying. Yeah, you boys oh. want to play some baseball type <clears throat> of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not there. <laughs> was it Not sweaty? There. It was. Uh, these guys were a lot of ex-cons and, like, their girlfriends... And they were dealing coke, but doing heroin. Jeez. Well, you know, you, you, you have well, to separate, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know. It's yeah. Imp- it's, it's important to know Now, your Wonderland business. Drive is in the Hollywood Hills. Laurel Canyon. Right. Yes. It was, uh, it was, I mean, I kind of started going into this because I watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and I, I we went to... Cielo Drive. Cielo Drive after, where the uh, Tate LaBianca murders happened. And I was like, man, this looks just like the footage I've seen of Wonderland... Mm-hmm. Uh, I wonder how close that is to here or whatever. And so that set me off on going back down into this whole thing. And I, uh, I, I, I so these guys from the Wonderland gang were all these ex-cons and they were, um, they were in this, you know, nice area. Yeah, that's, you know? that's what I'm it's getting like, at. You about? get these biker... Yeah, but, I mean, you get 15 guys, you can pay for a fucking nice yeah, place. Yeah, that's true. You know? I knew plenty of dudes in my 20s who all, you know, it was like eight dudes living in a house in Laurel Canyon. Right, there's four bedrooms or something. Right, you know? right. So kind of the... the Just I, like jail. <laughs> I would say the the kind of the leaderish type guy would be uh, Ron Lonius, who was... A, Ron, Ron C. Lonius. An Air Force vet from Vietnam. And John Holmes was like terrified of this guy because John Holmes owed these guys a lot of money. So then he started doing like errands for them and shit like that. So this is is after John Holmes was making three grand a day, fifty dollar book. Starting to decline, mm-hmm. worth habit, and then he's getting deep to these guys. But you know he's part of the coke that he's And he's probably right. bullshitting all day, you know, right. telling lies like, oh I'll get you next week, blah blah yeah, blah. I'm shooting I'm, another scene with you know, the bear. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That happens a couple of times. These guys are on heroin. Right. They he's don't know doing, they, they're dozing out. But they're also <laughs> they're feeding him coke. violent, violent criminals. Like these guys are no motherfucking joke. Mm-hmm. And Lonius was dishonorably just discharged after Vietnam because he was smuggling heroin back in corpses. Oh, so he's part of that gang. He was doing that type That's of shit. That's the whole American gangster shit. Yeah, but I think he was doing it over here. He wasn't doing it in New York. He was doing well, it Vietnam in LA, is easier yeah. to get here. Right. So, but I mean, that's first of all disgusting. Yeah, disgusting. Um impressive. Police Exqui- exquisitely impressive, and they kind of came down from Sacramento. These guys, um, oh, nothing classic. good. Okay. Yeah, yeah one of them's a neo Nazi, except of course. for uh, Kevin Anderson. Nice guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah he's he said neo Nazi, right? <laughs> <laughs> at the time, at the time of um, of Ron Lonius's passing, police suspected he was uh, involved with as many as twenty seven open homicides. That's not good. That's twenty seven. Um. He was charged in 73 with the uh, murder of a police drug informant. And well, snitches get snitches. I mean, that makes so. sense, but it's you're not good. A key witness was killed in like a totally separate shootout by total happenstance. And, oh, and random. He, and he walked free. No, really. Like, it was just a totally separate crime. Mm. And um, then he was convicted of uh, smuggling heroin and coke across the Mexico border. <laughs> Served three years of an eight-year sentence. Um, the... Cop uh, that caught him for that said he was like, uh, he was one of the coldest people I ever met. Oof. And um, another officer after Lonius died said, um, I suppose they won't need many pallbearers. And somebody's like, what? And he goes, trash can only has two handles. <laughs> good line. That's a very good line. Yeah. Very funny line. I, um, do you think he used that before? Or was that the, he was just saving it up? I don't know. It's yeah. pretty tasty, he wrote though. That one yeah. down is like, soon as Lonnie is crowed, I'm tell my this wife. one out. They're yeah. going to love it at the precinct. Um, his his right-hand man was this guy named Billy Deverell, and he was kind of like the sane one because he was just a bad heroin addict. And he just stayed in it, you know, because, like, they were friends and he was depressed. It's like the <laughs> slowest. I mean, the Godfather is already long, but yeah. then you add heroin addicts. He was like a, a, a crane operator, like, totally could 
not be involved in selling drugs or whatever. But he was arrested 13 times in relation to his addiction. That seems like a lot. Um, yeah, when you get those cushy union jobs, you can right. go sneak off for three hours and shoot some hate. Right, right, right. I'm on the clock. David also, I mean, well, well, white guy too, right? So it's like there's no, there's no three strikes yet. Oh, no, 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 no. David Lind was a biker and an Aryan Brotherhood member that served time with Lanius. And they were like, you know, afterwards, we're going to get, we're going to do whatever, some scores together and sell some drugs and shit. Yeah. And Only to whites. He yeah. said, he said about Lanius, he was like, you could hold a gun to his head and his pulse wouldn't jump up at all. Deer hunter. Just totally, totally calculating, cold motherfucker. And um, yeah, Vietnam fucked up an entire yeah. generation of people. Yeah. Um, so Lanius, after Lin gets out, he tells them to come down 81. They start running drugs. Um, two of them have girlfriends that they're living with. One of the girlfriends owns the Wonderland house. That's She used to be married to a Beverly Hills attorney. Oh. Uh, that's why. Uh, la real criminal. <laughs> uh, Lind had been in for armed burglary, forgery, assault, assault with the intent to commit rape. Um, oh. and, uh, and he was maybe a snitch with his girlfriend? Probably. Uh, in Sacramento. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, Joy Miller and Tracy McCourt. Uh, Tracy McCourt is the, the one that uh, drove. Well, I'm not going to get there yet. But she was, with, <laughs> she was with David Lind. Joy Miller was uh, Billy Deverell's girlfriend. And, uh, yeah, they were just doing a lot of crazy partying and a lot of hard crime. And John Holmes was kind of running errands for them. And John Holmes was also a friend, associate, pet trophy of Eddie Nash, <gasps> who they call the Arab. And I don't know a goddamn thing about this motherfucker. You don't know about this no. Eddie Nash motherfucker? All I know is that it sounds like John Holmes, much like Deep Throat, there's a certain time and a place, and he fell into the wrong one. Uh, yeah, I mean, like... He jumped head first. Yeah, well, that's he, did, he, he did, he did. Fall. Um, You're absolutely right. So, Eddie fall Nash... Fall jump. <laughs> Eddie Nash was born in um, what was then Palestine, okay. and... Uh, is now Israel. <laughs> yeah, yep. exactly. It's the new They Might Be Giants song. <laughs> and he left because <laughs> well, it was Palestine, and now it's the West Bank. <laughs> it's a settlement, and now you're fucked. Yeah. He was, um, he, but he was a uh, Orthodox Christian Palestinian, and... Um, like God intended. Like, Israeli <laughs> soldiers killed his brother-in-law. He books it to uh, in the early 50s to America, and he shows up here with straight up $7 in his pocket. And oh, but back then. he was kind of doing, um, you know, just... Hustling little jobs. He kind of did uh, a little stunt work. Ooh. He was a horseman, expert horseman. Ooh. He was on the Cisco Kid as a character named Nash. Uh -huh. And um, he, uh, yeah, a little bit of acting. But he was mainly just like hustling around. And in uh, the 60s, he opened a hot dog stand on Hollywood Boulevard called Beef's Chuck. That was also one of um, uh, John, John Holmes' movies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> His penis names. So he just. He Beef's wrote that book about Chuck. people's jobs, right? <laughs> Nash, Chuck. Nash just fucking kills him, man. He just works really motherfucking hard, man. And he starts opening up liquor stores. And then oh, he starts yeah. opening up nightclubs. And he's pretty savvy on this front because he'll be like, all right, here's my black club. And then here's my, like, strip club. And then here's my punk kids club. So he's fucking, he's got the Kit Kat. He's got Alibaba's. He's got the Seven Seas. He's got the Paradise Ballroom. He's got the Shit. Odyssey. He's got the fucking uh, Starwood. You know? Um, he's got all this shit and... Seven dollars. Kind of knows how to just do them all, you know? Like, and this is like a pretty wild time, of course. Mm -hmm. um, the Starwood was rated like 20 times a month. Because by, cop, by, vice by cops, yeah. Or, yeah, drug cops, too. One time they found a box of 4,000 counterfeit quaaludes... That's Count it. Counterfeit quaaludes. Yeah, bullshit pills, placebos, as it were. Uh -huh. Who tested it? And uh, these aren't doing anything. It said for distribution at box office. <laughs> like when you pay into the fucking show, you get a fucking fake quaalude. A fake lewd. Yeah. Counterfeit quaalude. And uh, you know, Nash was uh, starting to get into drugs really bad, like his own habit was like kind of a million dollars a year. Which is fucked because like he had all of this he has all of these he doesn't need and he's doing to get into drugs unless he's doing them. No 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 no. And he's dealing a lot of drugs and he's laundering a lot of money 
And um, yeah, he's a legit businessman and he's a totally illegitimate businessman and he's making a fuck ton of money from both. Because the action is the juice. But he, well, I mean, the problem with today's billionaires is fucking Bezos needs a heroin addiction. Uh, well, well, Purdue is fi filing for bankruptcy, so he's not going to get any yeah, sweet, get any, sweet yeah, Oxycontin. Yeah, fucking Christ. He, um, all those billionaires are addicted to children's blood anyways. Yeah, that's probably, yeah. That's, uh, he not only, uh, you know, gets <laughs> into coke, but he gets into freebasing. You got a freebase. Right. Oh, let it out. Is, you know, by this... By the time it goes straight to the dome, mm -hmm. is what I understand. And he's doing it so much that he, uh, you know, he has to like I think have a lung removed. What? Yeah, and like um, he's, today's vape. He loses. Uh, he got you know, that vape disease. <laughs> yeah. He's got a um, like a a crazy. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sir, this lung is full of free base. You gotta take this. He, he, yeah, his fucking um, his his nasal cavity is all fucked up, <laughs> and he has a steel plate put in his skull. <laughs> What's the plate for? <laughs> to keep to keep the fucking free the base. Coke is yeah. falling out. Yeah, his fucking his fucking. I got this plate here, so I can just chop it up right here on my <laughs> just head. Sucks it right in. <laughs> Nothing chops up blow better than a steel plate in your fucking head. Yeah, dude. He is um So he was snorting too much and it fucked up his nose. He was base he was a free basing so much it fucked up one of his lungs. Yeah. And then he was going to the dome so much that he needed a steel plate. Yeah, they, he fucked himself up really bad basing cocaine. And this is the Phantom of the Opera. And he's got he's got, you know, he starts staying at, at home a lot. <laughs> yeah, you think because his face is destroyed? in a silk robe with a little Chinese boy with, and a, and a bodyguard, and he's just kind of chilling there all the time. And but he likes you know having John Holmes around. He loves porn. Um, he loves introducing him to people. Yeah. You know, uh, and he's he's disgusting. He's always around like with a ton of prostitutes. Fuck. You know, he's a total maniac. And um, the story goes, you're gonna love this, Matt. This is very much your thing. Thank you. That he wouldn't keep toilet paper in the bathroom. He would just come out <laughs> and give co girls cocaine to lick his ass clean. <laughs> Isn't that your type of the thing? The story goes. Where does it go, John? You think you got to take a shit? <laughs> what? I mean, the power dynamics now, of this whole house now, are off. Now, now, John, did he? Was it? Hey, lick my ass clean, and I'll give you this coke. Or is it? There's coke in there. Yeah. <laughs> Go get it. I'm no, shitting no, no, coke. No, no, it was definitely uh, lick my lick my ass clean, uh, and and I'll give you a bunch of coke. I guess. So one night, that was just what he liked. One night he judge. ran he ran out of yeah, toilet paper me, while coked out of his mind. It was like you know what. Yeah. My secret, <laughs> buy toilet paper. I'm always out. Uh huh. I'm always out. Of, oops. Yeah. You know, in Europe they have bidets. <laughs> That's you know. I th I like to think that the civilized man in Eddie Nash probably gave his ass a, a, a cursory bidet wash. <laughs> well, you know, in so, my in my opinion, the fancy man's toilet paper is Coke. That's right. That's <laughs> it's, right. it's 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 grainy. It's for written. your pleasure. It's, it's white. Yeah. It's um powder it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, um... what the <laughs> fuck? Thank you for thinking of me. I mean, <laughs> sorry. No, 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 no. no. I, uh... Because you know, you, you, ca you, ca you catch sort of more flies with coke than you do with shit. Yeah, <laughs> but so now coke shit. Now you don't want to have a shitty ass. You yeah, want, you want them to want. To you want to have ass. a cokey ass. Yeah, you want to have. You want. I don't know the ins and outs. Jesus. I mean, just, I'm gonna have to really kind of unpack this for a while. I think there's an issue. Is that more with... environmentally friendly? <laughs> no, sick. no, because you have people full of disease. Yeah, it, disease. If the less people, the better. Is the way I. <laughs> well, I guess I suppose we really need to people, break down. People this. are the disease. Stay tuned for our Patreon what, this week, where we break down on a butthole. Yeah, we break coke down the the, the, yeah. the math of this. It's uh, it's really wild. Um, um who who um who 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 handed this uh this story out? That was from John Holmes' uh final wife. Uh, yeah, Spouse. so, uh, after John died, you know, John's dead, so I got, uh, like, three stories to tell. Uh, uh, one's about Nash. Yeah, so, um, 
the uh, the Wonderland gang has John Holmes, you know, indebted to them, and they uh, are getting little chores out of him, whatever. Hey, John, we're out of toilet paper. <laughs> hey. So, uh, huh? <laughs> I think in desperation or in a cocaine psychosis, whatever. Same idea. John Holmes is like, you know, I know this dude Eddie Nash, and he'd be a, he'd be a pretty dope, you know, robbery, and he's got all this shit, and blah blah blah. And he's the mark. Yeah, he's got all this shit. So the, he does. He's got, he's got a lot got of one shit. Long. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> one long steel plate. He won't. No nose. No, he can't smell his coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't hear, smell, breathe his coming. He's uh, he's got um. You know, uh, just he's got a lot of cocaine lying around all the time, and there's a lot of cash. Well, it's and... because there's no toilet paper. Of course, of course, <laughs> we're out of toilet paper, but there is coke. Um, oh, thank God. <laughs> there's so, one rule in this. House. The thing is, if you do enough coke, you won't need toilet paper. Mm. <laughs> Eventually, yeah. you just, it's all it's human bidet. There's you're no, your own, and there's nothing to shit yeah. out. Yeah, of course, a... you're on a steady diet of, you know, it, it's a circular system. It is. It's yeah. uh, it's a complete. Yeah. Loop. Don't you have to shit anymore? No. <laughs> Let me tell you. The um So the idea was that John Holmes would go over and unlock the sliding glass door and the gang would come in and rob him. Simple. Sounds Simple. like a very easy thing for a group of ex cons to quietly right. do. Mm-hmm. And um So the plan is John, being the inside man who mm-hmm. knows Eddie Nash, he's one of Eddie Nash's favorite mm-hmm. play things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh may or may not have licked his ass. I'm going to leave that door open. Who's to say? Who's to say? Uh, but he is there and will yeah. unlock that sliding door so that the Wonderland gang will later go in and rob this motherfucker. Yeah, and you know, shit. you know, he Nash did have some gangster notoriety too. It yeah, just it's pretty gangster to get girls to lick your asshole for coke, dude. I just mean there's there's also heavies around, right? Of course. Uh, yeah, he's got bodyguards. He's a fucking he's paranoid. But I don't understand yeah, if if yeah. you know, if the rich heavy likes you, you know, why are you hanging around with these other shitheads, you know? like Because you're still in debt to them. They don't make them lick their ass. Well, but why are you getting dude? involved with these guys that are like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Low like, lives. Yeah, hanging really dangerous. Be, be, yeah. He's, such One, a, he's such a phony and a liar about everything at this point. He probably could have said, Nash, I'm in debt with these guys. Can you get me out of it? Right. But he didn't want to admit, Nash is like, are you right. okay? Can I help you? No, I'm fine. Everything's great. Yeah. He's probably, he could not. Yeah. I don't know. Self sabotage is a real thing. It's a very yeah. You get you get comfortable with being Mm -hmm. a piece of shit. So John Holmes goes over there in the morning and he forgets to lock the door. The whole reason he's there Mm -hmm. to unlock it. Unlock unlock it. it. Excuse me. I mean, because yeah, that would have been. And then he goes back and he unlocks it. Very obviously now. Well, who knows? A little iffy. Yeah, who's this? Everybody's on coke. Maybe they're not suspicious. Hey, I like I like things he, locking he, up. He like goes it. back and tells the gang, like, all right, she's open. And they all just took heroin and they're all, you know, sleepy. Perfect. Uh, fuck. So a lot, lot of adults in the room. Takes here. takes a while to come out of that, right? Mm-hmm. So by Ooh, then the sun. he's worried that maybe somebody's locked the door by now. So he goes back a third time. Perfect. Unlocks the door. That was already maybe unlocked. That it might have been, yeah. Who knows? So June 29th, 1981, they go into the slide, through the sliding door with, um, you know, three of the guys, uh, one of the girlfriends driving, and they held Nash and his bodyguard at gunpoint, and they took his drugs, his jewelry, and his money, about $1.2 million worth of shit in drugs. Jewelry and, and money. Yeah, yeah, all that shit. Wow. Antique guns, you know. Um, Not a roll of toilet paper. No. Right. So a, Lin- a real nose. Lind uh, gets knocked into by Lonius and something, and he acts. His gun goes off and hits the bodyguard, and <laughs> no, it is, uh, the odds. It just grazed his face, like it wasn't uh, like whatever. But um, just you know, face. um, a face. I don't. Want, I don't want Nash was made to beg for his life on his knees, which he found humiliating. Apparently, hmm. huh. um, sure. and they were calling him like you know, uh, like Arab slurs and right. stuff like, like that. Yeah. You're I'm sure you a, can imagine. These no, ex-cons. I, 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 oh, you I, don't, don't, I don't know don't any racial stuff. slurs at all. No, you yeah, know, this is your more type of your... Th- yeah, no. Like no, I, I, algebra jockey or whatever. Algebra you know? jockey. <laughs> you know how it goes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That old slur. <laughs> you fucking algebra jockey. Classic Vietnam vet <laughs> ex-con you slur. Know, the prejudice against Arabs. 
Yeah, you fucking. Yeah, yeah, your invention fucked me up in middle school. You, <laughs> you zero knowing motherfucker. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't appreciate your influence on Spanish culture with the 700 years <laughs> so of Na occupation, my brother. Nash immediately is like. Beg! Is like, uh. Oh, well, fucking Holmes was here a lot that day. Hmm, he seemed to come back three times to so do one with thing. That, he sends uh, the bodyguard with the grazed face out looking for Holmes. He finds fucking Holmes walking down the street wearing one of Nash's rings. What an idiot. Like, you fucking shithead. He gets taken Amazing. back, you know, uh, I found voluntarily this. or not. To the algebra jockey's house? <laughs> to the algebra jockey's house, you know. That's, that's very good. What's your very bad, price but very good, but very bad. Um, <laughs> he, uh, and he gets tied to a chair and just beaten the shit out of him. He's not even Muslim. <laughs> He's not. I know. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. But they don't know that. They're all on heroin. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, and uh, at the time he gets taken back to the house, it came out years later, uh, Scott Thorson, Liberace's boyfriend... From the fucking movie, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 he was there. He was at he was Nash's? at Nash's buying coke, watching John Holmes get the shit kicked out of him. Oh my god! Hey, what are you guys doing over there? Oh, you're beating uh, John Holmes to death. I'm All right, shit cool. His man. Pants too, dude. And uh, <laughs> so they beat him up until they told him. And so then, you know, a couple of days later, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they, they beat the shit out of Holmes for a couple of days. You donkey dick motherfucker! Mm -hmm. No one's licking yeah. your ass. No, yeah, you got to use toilet paper like a fucking common, <laughs> common unwashed piece of shit. Yeah, you big dick, yeah. plebe. I mean, I can have Liberace's boyfriend lick your ass, but I'm not even gonna. Nah, it kind of looks like Liberace too because of that plastic <laughs> surgery and shit. But he's uh, he uh, he gets three heavies to go with John Holmes back to the Wonderland House at 3 a.m. and um. They said that it was a bloodier crime scene than Tate LaBianca. Jesus Christ. The cops immediately upon finding the crime scene said, this is a message. And the message is, don't fuck with Eddie Nash. They were beaten with lead pipes in their beds. And uh, it, it, it was just insanely violent. John Holmes had a palm print on the wall. Uh, uh, not bloody, as was you know mythologized later, and um, he just had his palm print was on the wall because. He but it's like beat. over the headboard uh, of like where you might beat somebody with a lead pipe, so or, or, or you might be fucking cock. yeah, you might be fucking somebody, and yeah, just been sitting there. I'll just use my cock, you guys. Don't worry, I'm packing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this doesn't happen. All this it's, usually doesn't usually happen. Is. Usually <laughs> lead. It's like a clay pipe. I've been studying algebra all day. <laughs> Up. You fucking kill someone with a slinky? Um, yeah, so they uh, they were uh, Ron Lanius, Billy Deverell, uh, Joy Miller, uh, and Barbara Richardson uh, all found bludgeoned to death. David Lind was not there because he was in a motel doing drugs with a male prostitute. David Lind, the Aryan Brotherhood guy. What? Oh, like shocker. Well, I, there's only it's brotherhood, not uh, yeah. yeah, it is. There's it only is. so many rooms in those places. You know? Um go to a hotel. So uh Susan Lanius, Ron's wife, was she survived. She got beat up but survived. Dude, she got fucked up. Um oh. she uh she lost like part of a finger. She had part of her brain removed. Wait, what? Yeah, and she um suffered from amnesia about the night of the murders. So she yeah some people some people heard part of her brain removed dude that's fucked up yeah some of the some of the some of the, like workers nearby like heard her like moaning or something and then came over and investigated and found the whole scene fuck <laughs> but the <laughs> night of the murders with everything going down they were like it sounded like any other night yeah yeah there's there's so there was always and, yeah. screaming and insanity Jesus so the murders like didn't yeah arouse any suspicion just another night at the Wonderland house yeah how fucking crazy is that. Oh. So, John Holmes gets picked up very, very soon. And, you know, later on, like, his wife, Sharon, was like, yeah, he came to me with blood, put him in the bath, covered in blood, and he told me. Then I was like, I was like, where are you bleeding from? So he had to take part in this? This isn't, 
He was his hand was on the headboard. At, well, the at, shit no, but without the blood, taking I mean, people's brains. I mean, out his, his hand could have been on the fucking he was at the, wall from he was, just fucking there or something. He was at the very like, least made to wash yeah. by Eddie Nash to teach him a lesson. Yeah, and people think he was probably made to kill probably. somebody to yeah, have him sorry, yeah. culpable. And he, uh, yeah, he came home was like really freaked out. Told his wife like, yeah, you know, Nash, maybe go over here and do all this shit and. He is so scared of Nash that he never says a fucking word, man. Yeah, that makes and John sense. Holmes has already snitched. If you know anything about John Holmes, he's a talker. Yeah, <laughs> like, with all that coke. Yeah, forget about it. It's like um, he he didn't talk to such a degree that he was given 110 days imprisonment for contempt of court for not testifying, not cooperating with police, like because they knew that they knew exactly what happened. Yeah, but. No way Who's going to tell, yeah. right? They immediately uh, raid Eddie Nash's home. They find like a million dollars worth of cocaine. The other million. He gets sentenced to uh, eight years in prison. Uh, officers, that's just my uh, toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You got it all wrong, guys. You got it all wrong, guys. Uh, <laughs> clearly, you don't understand how we do it in algebra. <laughs> I wonder we're so advanced. You know? Um <laughs> Hey, John, can I have one of those beers? Hey, of course. Oh. Thank you. Look at that. Um, so he only serves two years, right? What's up with that? John Boy? No, Nash on the cocaine possession. Ah. And, uh, See, that does seem weird. Later on, an associate says that he bribed the judge with about 100 grand. That's it? 100 grand. And then he, paper? he got it knocked down to two. Two years. Gets out. <laughs> um, and the, the, the LEPD you called asshole. him the one that got away because they all knew Eddie Nash was a major crime figure, definitely involved with these high profile, high profile murders. Right. It'd be like not getting Manson. You know what I mean? Like, you know exactly who did it. You know why. Right. Mm -hmm. But you also, I mean, he did, he was responsible for taking out some scumbags. He didn't so kill not, Sharon not Tate. Asked, yeah. well, well, that's, that's where it gets interesting, right? Because also, what about Eddie Nash, the businessman? Is he on the Chamber of Commerce? Right. How integrated with How Los we... Angeles politics is he? Right. Who else is bribed? What, what kind of dirt does he... Right. Who else is laundering money through mm -hmm. Eddie Nash? Right. You know, how many donations does he make to the Benevolent Policemen's Association? Exactly. How many trips to Lolita Island does he take? You know, uh, yeah, who does he take? Who does he have dirt on? Um, yeah. Right. So this is an 81 crime, right? And then they finally get enough shit together. I think with uh, Scott Thorson's testimony that came out about being like, oh, yeah, I saw the Liberace's boyfriend. Liberace's boyfriend. And in 90, they get a uh, a trial against Nash. And um, and what's Nash doing in 90? And Nash, well, he's back out. He's a business owner again. He's, he's just, I mean, he's keeping a low profile, you know, but, but he's still, you know, he still has money coming in and shit, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so he gets, he's tried for murder, for the Wonderland murders. In 1990. 1990. Nine years later. Yeah. And 11-1 hung jury. Later comes out, he bribed the young woman juror 50 grand. 50 grand's a lot. Oh, 50 grand's 50 grand. Yeah. Dude, double double jeopardy, right? You're never, getting, <laughs> never getting tried for those murders again. Nope. Right? And asshole, clean as a whistle. Yeah. Yeah, he's not even using toilet paper then. What's oh, he using? You think you think that you think? Come on, he's not making uh, any uh, changes in his life. Drives one that one female juror didn't have a taste. So now, <laughs> now he's really the one who got away, right? All right. So throughout the nineties, they're fucking hounding him, dude. And they go in, they find what they think to be a Co sh cops or cops, LAPD. Yeah, they think to be a shitload of meth, and it turns out it's just mothballs, <laughs> meth balls. Yeah, toilet paper. I mean, Look at all they... this meth got we scored. Do you know how easy it is for them to fucking uh, yeah, uh, like smoking. incriminate any fucking person they've ever wanted to, and they can't fucking do it for this guy? I'm sure he's got lawyers who can fucking. Are you the... are you saying the where's the fan? corruption when you need it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, the corruption. The, he's like the kingpin, right? The king, like you when know. you can afford a lawyer to, yeah. And if you've got enough dirt on important people, then you can and, bribe and sure her. Yeah, I mean, like, fuck, I mean, yeah. there's something to you know, like I, I knew this guy who, um, his father disappeared, and what was obviously like a elder mafia '80s thing. You know, grew up without his father, probably buried in like the foundation of some building or something. Yeah, you Jimmy know? Hoffa's place. Yeah, and he kept kind of like hassling the cops over the years as he grew up to be like, "Yo, I want to know what happened with my dad." And he's like, and I got a lot of general, just don't, 
Yeah. Like, just just don't. Right. Cuz it'll upset the balance. It mm. it's not maybe, maybe going to be like good, but like it's not necessarily definitely going to be bad, but like just don't. So I think Eddie Nash would have a lot of just don't behind him. Yeah. yeah. You know, but Made then, it this far. but then you know it gets to a you know a, a dick measuring contest. You know, with John Holmes is fucking you know uh, algebra buddy, right? And you don't want to be the LAPD that can't catch the obvious mastermind of a massive drug dealing, money laundering, murder ring. And, and but also uh, keep in mind just for. Now you gotta imagine he was in the 1990s Los Angeles Police Department, mm-hmm. the most corrupt police department in the country by far at this point. So it's they definitely had people on the payroll. Yeah, but also you gotta save face because of all that loss of face of not only not catching this guy, but also all that other shit we were fucking known for. Right. You know, so which is only getting worse. I mean. 90 was the beginning of this, 91, yeah. but then it gets worse with the Rodney yeah. King thing and the riots. So course. that's what they got Rodney for. That, yeah, they framed they Rodney framed him for, for the, the Nash. Wonderland yes. murders. Yeah, that's exactly Nailed right. It. Those mothballs were PCP. Uh-huh. He, uh, in 2000, there's a four-year investigation that leads to, in, in 2000, him being prosecuted for um, money laundering. And that's a, that's a RICO. Oh, thing. that's and so it's like federal. Yeah, they got him on Rico shit, and uh, in two thousand one, two thousand, uh-huh. drug trafficking, money laundering, and conspiring to carry out the Wonderland murders. Uh, so not so they, not so, murder, but conspiracy, but conspiracy to murder. Ah, uh, and that can um, be part of a Rico too. Right? Good lawyers yeah. and bribing yeah. one of the jurors. Um, at this point, Nash is in his seventies, right? And it's twenty years after the money. He's got yeah. emphysema, one lung. He's yeah, good. still he's plate, one lung. plate in his head. There's no coke. It smells like shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one's there to lick his ass anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And how much you have to pay back then? <laughs> Why is there no coke? Why does it smell like shit? Because there's no coke. There's no Same coke. answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, double jeopardy. Your honor. <laughs> so, so he agrees to a plea bargain, um, and it's you know not widely talked about because it happened in September 2001. Ah. Uh, huh. Coincidence? And he pleaded guilty to the RICO charges and to money laundering, uh, jury tampering. Um, the statute of limitations had run out on it, so you might as well say, yes, yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and having ordering his associates to retrieve stolen property I mean, from the Wonderland s- house. Sending heavies to go bludgeon people to death. Which might have house. resulted in violence, including murder, huh. but I didn't send anybody to murder. I just wanted oh. my shit back. I just, yeah, just ask them nicely. Yeah. In exchange, he received a four and a half year prison sentence, including time already served. So he received which a was what, three, three, three and a half year, three year sentence yeah. and a $250,000 fine. Oh, how did he pay that? For all that shit. Ain't that about a bitch? Well, you know what? He came here with $7 in his pocket. Mm. Uh, oh, bar- barely knew how to Yeah. Dude, and The Godfather Part Four. This is the American written. dream, man. Yeah. You know what? You can get it back. Yeah, his um get a pass, dude. He also had a uh a former lover and her son murdered in eighty four. Dude, why well, you gotta fuck? I just gave him a pass <laughs> just... and now you gotta tell me he's got a Yeah. I mean this guy was like a bad Jesus dude. Really, Christ. really now, is he dead? He did. He died in um uh let's see here. Hell of a 2000, 2014. Oh shit. Uh. At the age of eighty five. Hey man, with all, doing a lot of free base, you lived till eighty five. Culver Dude, that's City. Money. That's Buried money in Culver you. City. Buried in Culver City. Yeah, the oh, fucking yeah. armpit. Fuck, good. Hey. It's not a goddamn good thing in Culver City, is there? Yeah, there's a couple good things oh, in Culver okay, City. Sorry. You've got yeah. the Nakatomi right. Plaza. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. that's fine. From the Die Hard Motion yeah, Picture franchise. Yeah, that's just where Fox is now. Uh, you also got a, there's the Father's Office. It's good. Uh, oh, Father's is all right. That's a good little bar. Good yeah. little burgers and stuff. Uh, I mean, k Rex out there. I don't really like uh, it nah, that much. Nah, but, I'm not know, into terrestrial yeah. radio at yeah. all, being a podcast maven myself. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the one released gay porn movie with John Holmes, uh, The Private Pleasures, is just one thing. But his wife, Sharon, said uh, she came across a footlocker plated in 24-karat gold leaf, <laughs> which contained <laughs> photographic <laughs> references to Holmes' Private work. Private work. Which she burned. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a dick Maybe move. it's like the uh, Jack Parsons shit. It's him and his yeah, mom yeah, fucking yeah. a dog underneath the satanic <laughs> edifice. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the, do you know the Wonderland murders were the first time videotape was introduced as evidence? What was the videotape? It's of the crime scene, which is 
hair raising to say the least. <laughs> and um, now we're gonna play this John Holmes videotape <laughs> for the jury. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he gets out, you know, John gets out in 82 for the contempt of court thing. He never says a fucking word. I mean, that is also really speaks to the power of Nash that like John Holmes is like, I will. uh, Yeah, I, I know I can't get away with anything with this guy. Right. And that, and and that's the really, if, if it, if it went down the way, it it seems like it did. That's uh, the, the master stroke that, that Nash did was getting Holmes in on the action. Mm -hmm. Not only am I. Not only do I know that you set me up, yeah, and you betrayed me. I'm gonna make you go with them and take part in the act. So yeah, you are now emotionally and psychologically fucked up and in, in my possession. Yeah, and now you you cannot snitch because you are a creature that acts out of self preservation. Yeah. Right, and now I don't have the heat of killing John Holmes, world famous adult star. <laughs> right. Yeah. But and I also say- I, and you're not going to say a fucking word about anything, yeah, because you can't, because you're scum. Pretty good move for a base head. It's algebra. It's simple. I mean, it's simple. I mean, I mean it's simple. John was probably pretty obvious at that point. He's he, so. I mean, the fucking beat the shit. You know, the fact that he was willing to give into the fucking the thing is, ex-cons and that he gets, yeah, he gets out. Yeah. But and what's really powerful is turning a snitch into a not a snitch. That's very impressive. Yeah. It is. It is. But of course, who the perfect person to do that to is the snitch. Because they're, yeah. they're walking these lines. Yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of, yeah. I mean, you they're know, you're, you're a lines. snitch. A you're a fucking, you know, violent murderer drug dealer, and you're a Nazi, but you're also hanging out with this gay prostitute. This guy's got a, a huge little, cock. Yeah, yeah, a lot of contradictions, a lot mm-hmm. of uh, lines blurred. Um, he, uh, he gets out in 82. He's got drug addiction on and off, kind of kicks it, goes back. And he, he's got a lot of work still. After the Wonderland murders, John Holmes still in demand Fuck. for adult work, and um, but now it's going to the cheap videotape thing, which they show in Boogie Nights. Yeah, so it's well. not good work. Yeah, and now it's, it's like, like he's maybe not the lead, which is like shocking to him, and yeah. like it's kind of like talking to himself it seems kind of crazy. And um, eighty six, he um, gets uh, HIV positive, mm-hmm. right? And um, now he, that's when he was tested positive. Right. He may have had maybe, from what I remember, what I, he may have got it in prison. Well, uh, sharing needles. He did test negative uh, in February. Uh, no, uh, it was February '86. He got tested positive. Okay, five or six months more, he had been tested and he did test negative. Before that, yes. Oh no, shit. Um, but so what? How did he get I mean, it? Well, everybody said he was definitely afraid of needles, so definitely not drug use. So. Not afraid of cocks. No, he probably was... Loved it. Yeah, probably doing some kind of anal sex thing with a guy, is my yeah, guess. Yeah. And um, it could have been for drugs, who knows? Yeah, and it could have been some of his, you know, private work, like, yeah. was burned, whatever. Uh, Eddie Nash gave it to him like Suge Knight did. And he does do the, uh, the he gets the offer from Italy, goes uh, over with Sicilina. Knowing that he's HIV Knowing positive. he's HIV positive, which the Italians don't know, and... Um, it didn't, they're always behind. <laughs> uh, Bill, uh, you know... <laughs> the Italians. Like, they were barely getting fucking Hogan's Heroes on he, the TV over there. He did two two movies, and um, nobody got infected, thank God. Yeah. Uh, like you said, it's really hard to get STDs, Aaron. You're the authority on that. That's um, exactly right. Well, as a, as a man, it's harder to get an STD as a heterosexual man. Uh, right, John, if you're you being... John, you don't know anything about this man. You're, you're being <laughs> fucked. No, was, you and I is straight alpha dom male <laughs> cis. Isn't that, bulls, isn't that, isn't that some bulls. bullshit, though? Like, if you're being fucked, you're more likely to get it. It's like, you obviously, it makes sense. But that's... You get that, fucked. That's, yeah, it's, you know, it's a cruel that's... twist of fate yeah. as being the... Uh, well, that's just God's way of rewarding tops. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, you can be a queer, but don't you goddamn it be in bottom. <laughs> That's so fucked up. It's algebra. It is, yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's it's, it, it's um <laughs> it's, it's king an, of the hill, not base of the mountain. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> sorry, hell is on bottom. Yeah, Heaven yeah, is in the sky. <laughs> what, uh, well, uh, show me where I'm wrong here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it is hard. It's very hard, isn't meant to to catch something through your your PP hole. It's possible, but you can get it. Yeah. Uh, but that's what. The AIDS especially, or rather HIV especially, there's got to be some sort of like 
penetration of something, either a needle or a piece. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we do know that story about somebody that like went to the dentist one day and then sucked some guy's dick and got AIDS mm-hmm. that way. You ever hear that one? No. Our friend told us that one time. He knew a gay dude that like. Had... This is a verified story though, or um, do we trust the source? Two out of three dicks. Yeah, yeah, close. Yeah, close yeah. enough. Yeah, it's not a nut zombie level. No, it's field. not. It's not a sperm eating your brain <laughs> okay, okay. level no, story. I mean, but it sounds like it. It's pretty, but it is. An, it's an inefficient. It's not a very efficient disease, which feeds into conspiracy theories that like Reagan created it or whatever. But um, I mean, it stuck around for a minute. You know, it did. Uh, did quite, it was a, pretty, quite a bit I mean, of damage. That was the you know that was the the Eddie Murphy joke is like AIDS is scary because it kills motherfuckers. <clears throat> there there hadn't been anything. So in the, in the in these waiting years, you know, like Bron Jeremy was like, I was really pissed at Bill Emerson for not telling anybody in Italy. Like, yeah, he's coming over there with AIDS. Like, he's like, get on the phone. Yeah, that's fucked. It's up. Like, what are you doing? He's flying over with a fucking plague. And Bill Emerson is like, you know, after you watch this whole, I mean, if you watch the Wad documentary, which is fantastic, and you know where I definitely drew a lot of my knowledge from, um, he he's like, you know, John. Was, one of the sweetest people you could ever meet. It's like he beat his girlfriend. Yeah, he's involved yeah, yeah. with murders. According he's to dropping what I know. AIDS on yeah. Italy for no, like you know, like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> he's carpet bomb. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so later on, as you know, he's getting like he's fucking out of it and desperate, and on, and on he he marries a porn star, Misty Dawn. Apparently, while he's on a bender in Vegas, doesn't even remember doing it, and um. She was uh she was really into anal. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh and I I guess she saw him as some kind of cash cow or something. Because dude, when he's like dying in the hospital, she freezes Bill Amerson and all his godchildren out. She's like, yeah, she's so shitty to everybody else in John's life. His wife, like his wife finds out like third hand that he died. Like Jeez. Misty Dawn, really nasty. Bill Amerson's like <laughs> He's like, one time I, you know, I came over there and I heard her screaming, you know, at the house. And I go up and uh, she was tied to the bed, you know, and she had uh, sperm all over her face. And uh, <laughs> John was in the pool swimming. He jumped out the window, started swimming after he just on her face. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like splat. Uh, you see it, bitch. Uh, anyway, <laughs> good luck. Are you hot? Just me? Splash. <laughs> You're already <laughs> cooled off. I gotta take a dip. <laughs> Joy <Jordan> AIDS. <laughs> Dude. Jeez. Like, is is like Bill Hammerson like totally laying into how horrible she was, whatever. Wait, he's like, wait, she was? Yeah, I mean everybody's terrible. What are she you talking loved about? Anal sex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like he's like he'd he'd say he's I'm only with her because she's nasty. She lets me do whatever I want. He's really, this guy's a porn star. He's probably yeah. doing whatever he wants all the time anyway. Yeah. yeah. But um, Mur- murdering people, yeah, <laughs> getting away with it, yeah, you, yeah. He got AIDS, so yeah, and he got away with that too. He did two movies on AIDS. <laughs> well, John, not a, John well. did he get away with AIDS? <laughs> no, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. What a sneaky guy. But I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade two movies for AIDS. <laughs> he really tiptoed his way around, though. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not getting AIDS for two movie roles. Well, Al Goldstein <laughs> uh, said about him. He goes, um, "Would I trade my tiny little Jewish cock for his big 13 inch hog?" He's like, "You bet I wouldn't." I throw in one of my kids and two ex wives. <laughs> well, that's why Al Goldstein. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Al Goldstein in the documentary, dude, is amazing. I'm doing Al Goldstein on the show. Like, I, I, I read like his thing, and I was like, I have to do this. Did you first. Hold, you held out on that until right now, <laughs> dude, Al Goldstein. When I do Al Goldstein, when I, tra- on the show, when I trade my tiny little Jewish dick for John Holm's big thirteen, it, you goddamn right. I, I throw would. in my kid, his only kid, and two of my ex wives. That's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. That's dude, fucking straight out of No Holds Barred. Dude, it's fucking shit. He goes, John Holmes, to the doll industry was like King Kong. It's like, instead of his feet hitting the ground, it was these big balls. <laughs> he goes, he was easily the biggest legend I met in the adult industry, with the exception of Linda Lovelace, who blew me. <laughs> Al Goldstein, stand up, motherfucker. John Holmes yeah, never blew me. Yeah. Dead beat. No, I'm I'm seriously doing Al Goldstein next Hell time yeah. on the show. Oh yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ. Would I? Tr- would I? Dude, it's it's so good. My own, my own, my only, my only son. boy. My little Jew. my Moses. Two of my ex-wives. 
<laughs> you bet you did. You fucking damn right I would. I throw my kid in two ex wives. Dude, it's so good. Uh, the Wad John Holmes documentary is, uh, it's got, you know, P.T. Anderson, man. It's like, it's got all the adult mm-hmm. stars around, people that liked him, uh, people that loved him, people that hated him, you know, people that, you know, were just like, remember, like, the first time they saw his cock when they were going to have sex with him and talked about that and, like, how ridiculous it was. Other contemporary uh, male stars, current male stars, all talking about kind of, like, his legacy and, it's just, you know, your standard talking head documentary, but... Um, but about this maniac with a giant dick. Giant dick, yeah. And, yeah, it's, it really does a, a, a good job of, of showing you um, all sides. Uh, so there's there's uh, Wad, which is the one you're talking about. Wad, yeah, and, and that was, there's... like, included as an extra on the Wonderland uh, DVD, which is the, the movie about the Wonderland murders, with right. Val Kilmer playing John Holmes. That's right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Boogie Nights is Val obviously... Val Kilmer star Pete. <laughs> Uh, the one I saw was exhausted, right? Exhausted, exhausted is, is, is the basically por- just hit porn. It's a porn with, yeah. I re- I haven't seen what I'm gonna. I've, I've been trying, meaning to watch it, but exhausted is it's just a porn. It is just a, there a- and a blowjob to John Holmes. Yeah, it's it's a self it's a self serving you know cockumentary, right? Yeah. Uh, got cockumentary trademark two thousand nineteen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they. The inner cut, like, there's some, what I remember is, like, scenes of Holmes fucking, like, Marilyn Chambers or Seeker or something, but they cut it to, like, Midnight Sonata. Oh, yeah, or, yeah, like, yeah. Blue Dead. They, they cut it with, like, this uh, synthy classical music. Oh, dude, I mean, their selections so, like, sometimes are, like... Watch it for the entertainment value. Sometimes they'll throw out some fucking, like, uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, like, yeah, shit. Yeah, like, more Kone shit. Yeah, 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 like, you know, it's like, uh, it's crazy. The, sh- the, the the musical choices and totally illegal. It's worth a watch. Uh, not mm-hmm. Unlicensed what? stealing. I mean, you, you can go to your legal pornos or your mm-hmm. ex-hamsters or whatever. Don't go to legal porn. Don't yeah. go there. Yeah. You could get a VPN or something. No, that's not. That's not. But watch Exhausted. I, can, I will watch Wad, of course. Yeah. But uh, I, when I watch it, I, I did laugh. I yeah, not nut. But... P.T. P. Anderson is really great in it because you know he's such a kid. Yeah, he's twenty five. Uh, like, yeah, what he does, Boogie Nights or whatever, and mm-hmm. and you know he talks like you know like he's him, a valley kid. Him and, you know oh, yeah. uh, Quentin Tarantino kind of talk, and he's like you know he's like I mean you know he's like um you know uh you know fucking you know he's like you know I I I think you know some people just freak out from fame you know and and he had that you know he's like I think you mix in a little drugs and. You're like, oh, people only just want me for my big dick. <laughs> like, he's not know. wrong. No, he's totally yeah. like empathetic to it. He's like, you know, when I first saw Exhausted, it was so funny to me, but also so sad. It is. And you, uh, he does a really good job of of showing that in Boogie Nights. It's I, it's still to me his masterpiece. It is. It's really, really I don't, incredible. I, you can tell me all about fucking There Will Be And he blood. talks about uh, how influenced it is by Exhausted. He's like, the first time I saw this, he's like, I, I just couldn't believe... Like, you know, the bad filmmaking, like, as a film geek, you're into that, right? But he's like, essentially what I'm watching is a documentary about this guy's big dick. Yeah. How stupid is this? Yeah. The big dick that created an empire. And then he's like, and then how crazy am I that I make a movie out of it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like this is just good stuff here. Like, it's all silly. It's all very funny. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, obviously, the you know, the real life of John. Like, they end it really sad at the end of the documentary, and you're like, this guy's a psycho. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. He was not a good dude at all. Like, what are you guys talking about? They're playing sad music and shit. You're like, <laughs> get the fuck uh, out of here. He knowingly had unprotected sex in uh, uh, crossing international. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He fucked a minor. Yeah, a, I think that's he, a war crime. He gave her yeah, coke. State. He beat her. You know what I mean? He, he partook in a murder, a quadruple yeah. homicide, double penetration. Yeah. <laughs> So when did he die? Uh, he died um, <laughs> not soon enough. Eighty-seven, I believe. 87. Yeah, um, complications they yeah, say. Pneumonia. Complications? Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. Complications due to AIDS, and um, you know, all he left was you know a, a massive uh, legacy, <laughs> a gaping hole <laughs> in the industry. Yeah, yeah. And now guys like him are dime a dozen, dude, and none of them have AIDS. Yeah, and they're not really. And good also, at it's fucking... not the death sentence it used to be. So even if they did. <laughs> Just imagine coming back after the the Wonderland. <laughs> that was crazy. That whole homicide <laughs> shit, huh? Well, hey, it's uh, good to be on set. Uh, really, uh, can't wait really... to work. Yeah. Whose asshole do I gotta eat to get coke here? <laughs> Is it? 
<laughs> Who brought the toilet paper? <laughs> yeah. I mean Coke. I mean, first of all, I mean, I got I got out of killing those two gay guys with my cock first. <laughs> and then yeah, I yeah, fucking yeah. skated on this Dodge quadruple bullet. homicide. I mean, am I lucky or what? <laughs> that second murder, I didn't even use my cock. Can you believe how lucky I am? I got the rest of my hand on a wall. So, yeah, that's uh, Eddie Nash, John Holmes, the Wonderland it. gang. It's got everything. It's got wow. coke. It's, it's got, got heroin coke cocks. dealers. It's got Aryan homosexual meth heads in a hotel. Mm-hmm. It's got... People... Algebra. Ugh, I love algebra. Coke toilet paper. <laughs> it's got coke toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> And it's the choice of a new generation. (laughs) Only my dealer knows the difference. (laughs) My secret? I give them my synthetic paper. Single ply. (laughs) (laughs) So stupid. (laughs) It's Chinese. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really an episode about jobs. It is, yeah. yeah just yeah. Normal, yeah. Normal, just regular jobs. Regular jobs. You gotta. You gotta do what you gotta. You gotta do, do what you gotta you do. Gotta do. <laughs> you know, I, John, I love. I really Very love nice job. Every Very nice. everything Fun. about the story. If you want to take a nice little amble down Wonderland Drive like that, mm-hmm. I welcome it. Yeah, I yeah. welcome it. It's just you know, it's like um. It's really uh, weird, uh, just such a uh, subterranean L.A. in, you know, every way. Because it's know, porn, scumbag killers, and then, like, super high-profile organized crime right. type. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, the, like the, 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 the thing about L.A. is there's never been a huge discovered organized crime thing. No, no. Because... No. Presumably it's there, but just so well integrated. Yes, it's, it's always been a part of everything. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it was never... It's Chinatown. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it, but it, it, like, look at the, all the it. shit Mahalan. Just did. don't. You right? know what I mean? Like, no. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you know, you've got a, some of the, like, the Russians here, and but the Italian mob never took off. They left real quick. They mm-hmm. went to Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, just know, the people in the, power are got, part of the yeah, mob. Yeah, it is so entrenched that it's legitimized. Right. Yeah, it's exactly. not even a crime anymore. It's not right, even right. a crime because the people who made, did the crimes eventually made it in to power, like you said, the Chinatown Mahone thing, or and a lot of it's the movie industry, right? Mm-hmm. Like you almost don't it doesn't even have to be that criminal for it to be organized crime. There sure. is there is that kind of like you know, Hollywood Babylon that that kind of anger book, like Anger book. Like it, it it's already it's right it's an open corruption system. Mm-hmm. You don't right. need to have you know the black hand. It's it's just exactly there. yeah. There's and people are coming in on the busload every day, ready to be grifted, yeah, broke, and used, grifted, whatever. And yeah, used, and, you know, abused. and there's so much money, and you got to put it. You got to filter it through some sort of thing, and mm-hmm. exactly everybody's a, happy to you help you. Port, you got to like, stick it in beef's chuck. Mm-hmm. Oh, beef's chuck. Mm. What about Chuck's beef? What about uh, studs turkles? turkles. Studs turkles. Studs turkles. I think that was a club that Eddie Nash owned, right? <laughs> yeah. Studs turkles. <laughs> you got the black club. You got the gay turtle club. You got the gay Turk place. <laughs> Studs turkle. <laughs> <laughs> Istanbul's. <laughs> Fuck you, Come dude. Stand Istanbul's. <laughs> <laughs> Come stand to no pain. Oh my god. All right, that's uh, the that's yeah, the winner. That's... We're gonna say goodnight, everybody. I love you. My name is John Fahey. I love you. My name is Aaron Peter. And uh, save a tree and and uh don't use toilet paper. Do a bump. <laughs> the day with Coke. Matt Brousseau. Good night, everybody. We love you. Yeah.